Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. If you are there, say Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. This is Paul writing to his spiritual son Timothy. It was at a time when he was admonishing him. Theologically speaking, Timothy was a very young man and he happened to be the bishop. It was a name for an overseer. He had responsibility of building and maturing the saints that were committed unto him. And so once and again, Paul would write to him on different aspects of um, leadership church administration and so on and so forth and this was one of those uh, times so he was writing to him and he told him something he said all scripture is given by inspiration of god then the bible says and is profitable everyone says scripture is profitable please say it again scripture is profitable anything the bible tells you is profitable i think you should pay attention to hallelujah yeah there are many things in our lives we consider to be profitable and so we spend time we spend resources um for instance being gainfully employed is profitable so we rejoice whenever we find out that someone is gainfully employed we're happy right we consider marriage to be profitable having children is profitable so when a woman um, gets pregnant or delivers a child we all celebrate there are things in our lives that are profitable and here paul is telling his son in the gospel he's saying look all scripture is given by inspiration of god he said and is profitable number one for doctrine number two for reproof Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction in righteousness. Next verse. To the end that whoever commits himself to them, he says that the man of God may be what? The word perfect, there's the word mature. That the man of God may be mature. Thoroughly furnished. I like that. Not just furnished. He said thoroughly furnished unto how many all good works please listen to me we all want to see results in our lives we all want to be mightily used by god in different areas it's been the cry of people that's why many of us are gathered here trusting that we'll learn of the ways of god and here the apostle is saying that scripture is able to make a man of god mature then is able to make him thoroughly furnished he uses a language that is used in, in in furniture work when you know how furniture is the finishing you put on it you you file it you polish it and it looks beautiful it says thoroughly furnished so you come to a point where the degree of inaccuracy in your life is minimal so minimal anyone can trust you 
your voice can be taken as the voice of God. That's what it means to be thoroughly furnished. Such that when you communicate truths to people, they don't have to be under pressure to run around trying to verify because they have been able to gain confidence in your furnishing. They have come to a point where they understand that anything that leaves your mouth has been thoroughly edited. Your alignment to the spirit is so strong that your communications will have minimal correction. And so their hearts are open to receive. Then he says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Unto the healing ministry. Unto delivering people. Unto saving people. Right? Acts 10 38 says how um, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And with power. The Bible says he went about doing what? Good. See that? So when the Bible talks of good works, anything that is able to reproduce the victory, the life, the power, the love, the might of God, is considered to be good works. Good works are not ambitions. When the Bible talks about good works, it's not talking about your ambition. Everything that you commit yourself to under Christ that is capable of revealing the multifaceted dimensions of God is called good works. So if on the strength of my staying with the word of God, I access the mysteries that can ease men of pain, and bring the healing power of Jesus unto them. That is able to furnish me unto that good work. Right? It is very, very important. Please listen to me. God has been giving me some profound revelations. It's as though I've never read the Bible all my life. Sometimes I just open the Bible and I just lie down. And I don't even know what. Because it looks like every verse I could dwell there forever. There's something about illumination. I want to teach you something very profound tonight that will really bless you. Illumination um, is, is, is similar to the word enlightenment. Whenever we talk about illumination, access to light, access to knowledge, access to information, we have in our society those we call the elite or those who have illumination we mean that they have been able to educate their minds they have been able to train and program their minds to think and function in a particular dimension and they have to an extent been able to drive ignorance are we together now and so we call them the enlightened ones even in the world they have groups and cults that they call illuminati and and those people pastor is that you god bless you i like us to bless him great man of god all the way from kaduna thank you please can you stand up let's honor you thank you so much i'm happy to see you god bless you hallelujah we're to have a great meeting in his church and um we couldn't make it but um we're coming we're coming loaded and we'll bless the whole church god bless you sir Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is destructive. The strength of darkness is ignorance. The strength of darkness in the life of a man, in the life of a pastor, in the life of a leader is ignorance what is ignorance absence of light absence of strategy absence of illumination absence of understanding say amen there is so much ignorance in the body we have to contend with god's light to drive away this darkness otherwise the days that are coming will um, will embarrass us very seriously. The days that are coming now are separating the church into very two clear lines. It's either you know what you are doing or you don't know what you are doing. 
the disciples kept walking with jesus they thought they were understanding what he was teaching and one time he went up to the mount of transfiguration and they were happy to shine and they brought somebody who had an epileptic um, condition have you read that in scripture and they were so listen let me tell you something that you are hearing truths being told you does not mean you are enlightened i'm going to tell you what illumination is those guys had been with jesus they heard him every time and now they brought that man and were embarrassing themselves trying everything they knew to do and here comes jesus from the mountain and then they brought the man they said your disciples could not heal him and and they just stood dumbfounded hoping jesus would not also be able to heal so that it would show that their case was nothing special and jesus proved them wrong isn't it amazing how you pray that other people fail in an area you have failed so that it will show that your ignorance is nothing special it's so frustrating when you are failing in an area and somebody works flawlessly in that area it cancels out every excuse you would have given hallelujah that's why they hated jesus they hated jesus because every time he showed up his life and his actions was a message that frustrated the unyieldedness of the people jesus ministers to this person and at once he is healed he comes into a temple and sees a woman 18 years bound have you read that scripture i'm sure the people had been giving her all kinds of excuses madam look this and that and that and she believed it but here comes jesus and then he lays hands on her and even tells her madam i'm surprised you are sick didn't they teach you all the people who have been teaching every time didn't they teach you that you are a daughter of abraham did they not tell you the covenant that god had with him ah, the woman said I, I, nobody told me and the, the scribes were standing there hoping jesus will fail and to their shame he laid his hands and the woman stood up straight and they started finding excuses look at the excuses they brought don't heal people on sunday don't give them food there's all kinds of flimsy excuses i pray that ignorance will be destroyed from your life forever in the name of jesus christ we never know how cheap satan is until we stand on the strength of illumination hallelujah illumination it's a very interesting word isaiah chapter 60 please it's a scripture i've been meditating upon not just because the lord gave it to us as a prophetic word everything in your life is at the mercy of light everything in your life is at the mercy of light please hear me and take what i'm saying seriously your breakthrough in life is at the mercy of light your illumination your depth of spiritual enlightenment the quality of your ministry the quality of your life it says my son Pay attention to my words. He says, incline them to your ears. Do not let them depart from you. He said, they are life to those who find them. Not those who hear about it. They are life to those who found them. And health to their flesh. He says in Isaiah 60 verse 1. What's the first word? Arise. Arise. Can we get amplified? Is it possible? I like the way I, I Amplified puts it. Very, very interesting. I came with a very strong burden tonight. Verse 1, Amplified. I like us to read it. One, to read. Stop. Just that point. From the beginning to that point. One, to read. Listen, this is, this is the prophet speaking. He says that circumstances have kept you at a level, have kept your family at a level. 
nobody crosses a particular line nobody crosses a particular dimension a line has been drawn and ignorance sealed the line and now he says arise it's a prophetic call break standards do something that has not been done before and then he says shine be radiant with the glory of the lord why for your light is come you've heard me say it again not for your light is available it has always been available but until it comes to you are we together now that's why two people brothers and sisters walk this earth and their their, their testimonies are different like goshen and egypt others were dying in egypt whereas there was absolute tranquility in goshen Any man that ignores the illumination that comes from the word of God cannot be helped. That's the kind of person who no amount of deliverance, no amount of breakthrough, even if you pour one gallon of oil. You see, the trouble with the church is we, we uh, of course, that's, that's not applicable here, but I'm speaking to the church. We hate illumination, but we love what illumination only can bring. If I look at you right now and say, Sam, do you know that there's a problem around your life? I see somebody, I see an altar. Sam says, now you are talking. Are you getting the point now? Anything that excuses your responsibility to contend and understand the word, we love it and we embrace it. That's the reason why we love healing. We love deliverance. Because in our minds, we think it's a faster route. Instead of studying the Bible, I can just get deliverance once. You see, nothing in the kingdom was designed to replace another truth. They all complement themselves. This is why you can find believers, they can go through deliverance, they can have healings, but never able to walk in certain truths. It's always very comfortable to say, oh, demons are stopping me. There's a cause. There's this and that and that. But then many people in the body of Christ, believe me, many people are not passionate after knowledge. I was taught by the Holy Ghost that only second to your passion and desire for God, your next assignment should be an, a, an unquenchable pursuit for illumination. You must have a hunger for light. You must have a resentment for ignorance. You must have such, such a resentment for ignorance. We travel around and I look at people outside and I see how people are victims of what they don't know. You watch people all around, victims of what they don't know. You can see a woman sit down and, and please don't feel bad. I, I mean, see people trying to maybe fry yam or do something and, and you see that they are doing the best they know with the information they think they have. They never can know that life can be better. You see a lot of pastors, well-meaning and sincere people, but victims of darkness, victims of ignorance. And I made up my mind that in my life, I will be a bank of illumination. It's an assignment. It's a project I gave myself. That I will surround myself with mysteries like chariots. That on the strength of those mysteries, you will dominate. I've been meditating on this scripture. It says, arise. Brothers and sisters, when the Bible tells you to arise, it means access has been given to that light. Arise. Arise. Shine for your light is come the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 we're headed for verse 3 but let's just look at verse 2 media help us verse 2 it says for behold see darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people he said but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. Now this is the part, the part that blesses me so much. Verse 3. 
Ah, I receive it for my life. Every time I see this scripture, I know that I will never fail in life. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like you have found a jackpot. He said, Gentiles shall come. Gentiles shall come to what? I learned early in life that if you see people coming to you, nine out of every ten are not coming for you. They are coming for what you represent and what you carry. The day you let what you carry sleep, you get set for empty pews. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. You see, most preachers just think people like them. They say, my members love me. <laughs> Pray for them and let them not be healed for one month. And they will show you that, yes, they love you, but they love themselves more. Hmm. He says, and the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, something about your life will make Gentiles come. They will give every kind of excuse. People will say, but do you know it's not your tribe? While they are criticizing you, they are still coming. You know why? Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about illumination. Illumination is not a gift. It's a prize. It's, it's, not, it's an endangered commodity. You don't find illumination on the ground. There are not many people who are really enlightened. And when you really are enlightened, the Bible says Gentiles. It's a force. It can't be stopped. Gentiles shall come to your light. And this is the part that is even greater. It says they are kings. See, their kings don't come to your light because they are arrogant people. The kings believe they have lights too. They too have some level of result. So your initial light will not impress them. It will impress the poor. It will impress the sick. But the kings will say, we are watching. The queen of Sheba heard about Solomon, but it was not enough for her to come. But as the news kept resounding, a time came she could not deny it. And she carried her bounties. Up she came. See, let me tell you, there are people in your life right now it's not like they are not seeing you. Your light is not yet notable, but they are watching. They are paying attention to the transitions that are happening. They are watching your church. They pretend like they didn't hear the testimony. But they need what you carry, but it's not yet impressive. When you continue, a day will come. Look at what happened. Do you know that the scribes, the centurion, they had been following Jesus in secret. And one night, John chapter 3, one of them just came and said, Master, look, Forget the fact that we insult you. We know. We know you are a man sent from God. Is it not in your Bible? They said, see, there is nothing as powerful as light. Men can argue it in the day, brothers and sisters. But time, when you become consistent, it says there are kings to the brightness. One result after another. You see, let me tell you, consistency is a sign of mastery. Anything you can, any result that is short-lived in your life was a guesswork. It was not founded upon truth. It was founded upon luck. Any dimension, listen to me very importantly. Any dimension of result you had seen in your life before and you cannot get it again. It didn't happen on the strength and is dangerous. Let me tell you what deceives us. Sometimes you are, I've taught you about prophetic atmospheres. You can come into a man's prophetic atmosphere and leverage on his secret place with God and temporarily it will activate some results in your life that makes you think it was your personal altar that brought it. And so you will stop contending because in that atmosphere some things happen. You will now go back and find out you are left with your own atmosphere and your own growth and you will not be able to lift it. This is what happens. A man of God can come for a program and come with his own depth of spiritual reality and the strings of covenants he has with God. And you find out that momentarily that church can experience growth. But the man of God will now think it's just a new level. He's not learned the spiritual keys that really bring growth. Are we together now? And so after a while, he will find out that the truth about the state of the church is revealed. Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles. I want it to, it looks very simple, but I want it to be buried into your head. That brothers and sisters, your escape from life 
is your access to light. The day you find it, start jumping. I don't care what is before you. Just start rejoicing because you are out forever. Light. Light. He says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Illumination. Let me tell you what illumination is. Reading your Bible does not mean you have illumination. Criming scriptures and being able to quote them out is not illumination. Are we together now? See, one of the challenges with the body of Christ is you hear me quote scriptures and it's easy for you to think because I'm quoting them. You don't have to be a child of God to be able to quote scripture. The concept of memory is a psychological thing. Anybody can learn it. We teach children to recite memory verse. Abi, Sunday school. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning. And the child is saying it just like, like a robot. You think that child is enlightened? Of course, he's on his way to, en to enlightenment. But it's not enlightened. Many of us are frustrated because we think we have accumulated a lot of scriptures. And we think on the strength of those scriptures because we can speak them out. It means we are illuminated. No. You are only illuminated when understanding comes. When you can draw out the mysteries and the principles behind a scripture, illumination has come for you. Otherwise, everything you have is just the letter. And the Bible says it can kill. Learn this. It's not just because you found it in the Bible. Where it was written by his stripes, I am healed. And you say, oh, I found it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, this is your word. Hold on. You think you have gotten illumination. Are you seeing why we don't get results? Although we are holding scripture, it's unable to. The Bible says that we can make the word of God of non-effect. There is a technology that breaks the word of God and releases the life therein. That's what we call illumination. Two men were going with Jesus to Emmaus. You've read that scripture. And the Bible says Jesus, the living word, the resurrected Christ was with them. They were discussing with him, but their eyes were closed. A man can be around Bible, around church, around revelation. You are listening to several messages, but until your eyes are open, you will never have illumination. And the danger is that your familiarity with scripture will convince you to think you have illumination, but your results will show that you've not gotten it and it will frustrate you. That's the situation with many of us here. So you are spending time reading your Bible, which is good, but there is no illumination. Let me tell you how you will know. You can measure darkness in your life. Start looking at every area of your life one by one. The result there is a direct reflection of your access to light or otherwise. You will have to be very humble to admit what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Gentiles will come to your light. Your assignment is not to run around chasing people, looking for favor. No. The reason why we are the ones running around people is because we do not have light. The Bible says Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. If you want to come out of the situations that surround your life, the first key is light. The first key is illumination. There is something you do not know right now that is responsible for the quality of your life. Are we, are we together? Please listen. Are we together? There is something you don't know right now. There is something you can know that will change your life forever. I sit down and I look at what the Lord has shown me now. And I look at what I used to know four, five, six years ago years ago and I cannot imagine that I was comfortable and even preaching at that level of ignorance between the last one year of my life I can turn back and see very clear evidences of ignorance beyond my imagination I would have argued with you if you told me that there were so many things I didn't know amazing 
there are many of us who are convincing ourselves right now that we are so enlightened but your life is betraying that conviction and so it's time to settle down and ask yourself very sincerely do i have light or do i just have the letter do i have light write this word down the mysteries of the kingdom i'm giving you a key to the prayer you may have been praying the fast if you're not interested in hearing what i'm saying then forget forget about a solution forget about results in your life i really want you to get results i really pray that we'll all get results the mysteries of the kingdom i've taught it here again and again that a mystery is a secret truth a mystery is like a code of operation a code of operation a secret code of operation in the kingdom men reign on the strength of the mysteries they have come to understand and apply write those two words understanding and application these are the two things that make the word of god profit you understanding and application in all you're getting he says get understanding Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Wisdom tells you it is good to tithe. Understanding tells you how to tithe. That you don't just carry money and just come and drop like a bribe. The Bible says honor the Lord, not give to the Lord. When it comes to tithing, your attitude is as important as the substance you are holding. Are we together now? So the Bible teaches us that it has been given unto us. Say it has been given to me. Please say it, personalize it. It has been given to me. To know the mysteries of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if what I'm telling you enters your spirit and you take it seriously, you will get up and walk. You will, in, within a month, the results you will produce within a month will dwarf what you've had for many years. Please believe me anybody who is not ready to sit down and understand the mysteries of the kingdom is a man that cannot be helped i run away from people who do not have passion for understanding the word they are dangerous i rather stay with i rather stay with a herbalist a herbalist is more friendly at least he's passionate about something than than a careless person who has no passion his ignorance will affect you. Don't forget people have atmospheres. Right? The same way you contact sickness just by coming close to somebody and we say it's a communicable disease. What do you know about kingdom wealth and who taught you? What do you know? What is your guarantee for a blessed life? I think I'm fine. You are joking. You are really joking. I went to school. You are joking two times. I'm very serious. I mean, jokes apart. I'm really serious this night. What do you know that will make you excel in ministry? I'm a man of God. They laid hands on me. You are really joking. What do you think will bring a crowd to your church? I'm probing, I'm showing you all the areas when I, when it's like a call and response. When I mention the area, tell me the mystery you know that supports your confidence that you will excel in that area. And you will see how we are moving with rings of ignorance. We are just hoping we know. Can you tell me what you think will make you remain in the next 20 years? What if somebody is calling your name to die tomorrow? I come for koinonia. God knows my heart is open. What else? See, I'm opening us up to see the need 
it was strategic knowledge you see another mistake is many believers go for knowledge but our knowledge is not strategic it's not applicable it's like a student who maybe got medicine and he can sit down and say i think i want to attend a, an architecture lecture and he goes there and then next tomorrow he's in theater art he's taking lectures but it's not strategic it's not constructive at the end he will never become a doctor so many of us are puffed up by several messages we have listened to you gather the message of anybody abroad anything new you just put them together you swallow them like a drug and say satan come and try me and he says you are still the same let me tell the truth you have not changed i don't want to waste my time gathering revelations and informations that sustain no power to produce results in my life and the life of others do you know the danger especially as a leader pastors hear this you see when people come they submit to your tutelage this is the danger so if while you are ignorant they keep drinking from that ignorance until the day god delivers you and you will hope that they are around when he delivers you so you can tell them look i've been misleading you here's the correction what if you are not there they travel with that ignorance start their own churches too and the ignorance spreads hallelujah there is something bishop oyedeko knows that we do not know there is something he has handled that is producing the results are we together oh he's just lucky he had an 18 hour vision wait until he tells you the processes that led to that thing that encounter i want you to be tired of lack of results in your life we don't serve god for results but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life in every area of your life so what gives you confidence that you are not going to die many people have said i will not die and they died so think quietly what gives you confidence that you are not going to die bold face does nothing to satan i won't die what gives you confidence that you will remain in hell oh by his stripes i am healed you ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die i'm, I'm challenging you is god speaking to us what gives you confidence brothers and sisters that you will get up and travel and come back safe the bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day he never said they flew once they won't fly they are constantly flying even now the bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence right he said not the destruction that wasted by noonday it tells you a thousand shall fall so there are so many people falling brothers and sisters it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light or just shadows of realities what gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job did you know that two for instance out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation there are many first class students two one students two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting joining the queue even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Hmm. Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses. Oh, our church is not growing because the location is not, it's not very, the, the, the location is, is in a wilderness. Is that true? Is that true? Look what is happening to many families. We are victims of the arsenals of darkness. Anybody can die anyhow, any day. Anything can happen to anybody anyhow, any day. 
But it says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood. Listen, what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it. If I have... Can you help me with this camera? I, I won't touch it. Just show me where I shouldn't touch. Where I shouldn't touch here. Alright, can I hold this here? Is it okay? Look at this. This is a wonderful gadget. Are we together? Please, Pastor Femi, come. Come, just stand by my side. This is a camera. Is that true? He doesn't have any. Now, if I say who is better, I know you will say me because I'm holding one. I'm, I'm showing you cameras all around. And then you ask me, show me the pictures. And I say, look, forget about pictures. I have a camera. Are you not seeing it? No, no, no. Listen, listen. The goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see. And I've been holding this camera for a long time. I'm even laughing at this guy and say, you are standing no camera. We'll see where the pictures will come from. And you are holding this. There are no pictures. Are you seeing that? Who is truly better? I think it's this guy. Because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have. So his breakthrough can be faster. You, you think you have. If someone else comes with camera too, you say we are colleagues. Because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they hear a man of God share, they say we are also we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing. And they will never sit down to learn. The woman with the issue of blood said, look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera. Do you know his camera can even be better than this one? Yet it's not producing results. No understanding. Let me tell you, lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance. You can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding. Yeah. Thank you. The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, there is a spiritual rhythm. Light can show you the path. It says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I like you to shout it after me. I'm tired of confusion in my life. Say, I am tired of guessing in my life. That you are faced with challenges. And then you say, I think this is the key. You now try it. It doesn't work. You now go back. Do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing? If you don't get it once, it can destroy you. There is somebody out to destroy you in your village. And that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out. Your ignorance, if you allow it too long, you may be caught up in that tragedy. Are we together? This is what I tell myself all the time. Joshua Selman, you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life. And the key is the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. No other, no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of God. Make no mistakes about it. I've read a lot of books. I've read psychology books. I've read business books. I've read all kinds of things. 
any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of God is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life. Because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world. The Bible calls their light darkness. Are we together now? I, I see a lot of people teach and talk and is even stepping into the church. Whenever we are teaching certain things, especially about success, we, we push the word of God out and we say, just leave Bible, this one, we are now talking common sense. Anything outside the word of God is going to confuse your life. What is contained in this word? Mysteries. Mysteries. Keys. Kabbalatayada keys that open doors these are ancient keys brothers and sisters those see there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before the bible lists them in hebrews chapter 11 men who had these keys and did so many great things knowledge say it again i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing we are guessing over our finances. We are guessing over ministry. We are guessing over the anointing. I think I'm anointed. No, you are not. If you are anointed, there should be an evidence. If there is no evidence, you are not. Calm down and look for the keys. Hallelujah. If what happened to you last year remains with you this year, then it's your fault. We must contend for light. Everybody say there is a light that can deliver me everybody said there is a key that can open that door brothers and sisters there is no door that is made without a key but every door is at the mercy of the key he said i have given to it's been given to you to know the mysteries the mysteries of the kingdom what keeps you in divine health look at sicknesses flying all around you enter a restaurant you don't even know where they got the water from and you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means i'm going to die young what do you understand by the life of god when the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that God can dwell in a man. Have you caught the, his, the, the revelation of that truth? That God can dwell in a man. That God can dwell in a man. Let's take our finances for instance. At least this concerns us. What do you know about your finances? Or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed? That's a costly hope. Sister, do you have any shorty that a man is going to come and carry you? Believe me, if all you have is that I'm fine or I'm in a place where there are gentlemen, you are joking. See, let me tell you something. Knowledge truly kills fear. Uh, stand up, Pastor Femi. Stand up, promise. Watch these guys. Please sit down. Sit down. Were you afraid of sitting? Did you turn back to even check? You know why? Because they are sitting based on an enlightenment. They know what this chair can do. Are we together now? They know that this chair can take their weight. They are not thinking about it. I'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me. I don't expect it to. Are we together now? I'm not holding this, trusting it to scatter. No, 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 no. This guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop. He knows it should continue because he's playing it with knowledge. I gave an example last year, I think when I was teaching. I don't know if he was here or another meeting. If I call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and I say sit down, look how wonderful what he's playing is. Are we together now? That person who doesn't know how to play keyboard. Cameraman, come. Uh, do you know how to play keyboard? Don't waste our time. Come. All right, Mike, please stand up quickly. Just do whatever you think you know to do. Quickly. One minute. Now, let's see. 
Look at me. How many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient? It will produce any sound. Now, play anything. Go ahead. You may be making sense. Go ahead. All right, watch this. Now, this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard. Are we together now? Because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him. Ah, why are these kids not doing why are they not playing like this the problem is never the keyboard the keyboard was designed to be played but it has rules there is a rhythm you see the keys black white everything scattered all right okay thank you thank you go and do your job <laughs> all right so mike play please play something same keyboard same church same ministry same business same academics same nigeria play go ahead anything same keyboard that guy said his government that guy said is 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 nigeria that is not giving job that guy says machines that cause cancer i mean look at this listen the bible now watch this when everybody's in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out what do you think will happen the world was designed to not ignore spectacular things it's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention are we together now is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone including your destiny helpers those who can say look benga come and take five plots of land I just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable my goodness life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry light you see access to illumination is truly a sign of God's love because not everyone listen not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school not everyone will have the opportunity to learn English. Not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents. But everybody can have access to illumination. And brothers and sisters, when you find it, it will change your life forever. I kept thinking about this really. And I was telling myself, oh God, can you make the lives of your people so predictable? Absolutely predictable. Absolutely predictable. See, one of, the, one of the indices for measuring favor is, is um, the Bible calls it, it says you will be a delightsome land. People like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you. I like getting close to the ma welfare mama because something happens to me every time. Are we together now? <laughs> Who is seeking you for what you carry is it not surprising you that you are a nuisance to everybody around you they started it quietly but now they are open about it everybody is telling you you are really a nuisance to me pastors who is seeking you who calls your phone and will not mind calling it hundred times because he knows that if you pick his problem dies Who is willing to pick your call? That even if you say, I don't have credit, say, no problem. Me, I have money. It's, it's, I need light. They sought for Jesus to a point that people tore zinc. They knew they could negotiate with the owner of the house later on. Who has been that desperate about your grace? Who has coveted your anointing so bad they can pay anything for it? Light. Who has defended you in the presence of your enemies because of the degree of impact you have made in his life? And the person has said, I will never hear anybody talk against Sam. What Sam has done to my life, even when they are right, I will fight them. Hi. See, brothers and sisters, there are cheap pathways you can find in this scripture and build yourself out of this wicked world everyone say illumination say understanding
there is something we all do not know that is responsible for where we are the problem is we are too arrogant to learn we are too pompous to admit the fact that there is something we do not know how many young people brag around because they read one brand tracy book and they say i'm a financial expert you see that there is so much ignorance in our generation i'm speaking to people inside and outside so much ignorance in our generation spiritually every man of god believes him too he's a captain of his own even if there's no result and everybody comes and once you can join one scripture and just say this. i don't say it in a cynical way i know the things that are not in my life and i'm desperately pursuing them with every sense of humility and hunger and even if it is one of our little ones here that have it will not cost me anything to kneel down and say show me the way this is what we do not have this is one thing i respect about this man of god i'm sorry i have to use you pastor this is this is this is an elderly man but the humility this man has pursued me like like i don't even know what to say i was shocked seeing him i said again the day i the day he came over to my place and i was talking i mean these people eat my teaching in their church as if you will never be the same man of god it's a law you will never be the same i know why many of you are not being changed although you are in a place of tremendous change pride familiarity you do not discern you do not discern please listen to me the bible says you don't discern the lord's body and for that reason many are weak many are sick oh i've had koinonia message activating breakthrough destiny i've had it i was even there they used me as an example and you think that letter is illumination and somebody somewhere in one one room made with mud will download it and say lord i have found it i found the key so destiny help us and be praying it and the holy ghost will say this is it a woman came from benway state i think i, I can't remember last year or so this woman came with her husband they were pastors for many years they had struggled it's a terrible thing to be in ministry without any helper you pay for everything by yourself <laughs> when when the woman listen when the woman i don't know how i think one somebody here in, in koinonia went there and gave her just that message activating breakthroughs the ministry of destiny helpers she received that message digested the message she said she listened to that message at least 20 or 25 times there are messages in my life i've listened to up to 1000 times one message god is my witness one message i'm a product of many anointings what are you a product of your world your rema your deception you keep moving around in confusion with no result stirring up expectations in people oh i've come for this meeting you will see what god will do they say we are watching at the end of you say it's just that there's no time otherwise you would have seen what god will do it's a lie there is time there is time nothing will ever cover for lack of light not suit not good dressing not english not even rema it says you if you are not rising your light has not come it was designed to come and pick you from where you are in your name we will rise i don't know you reign on us it's in your name we will rise i don't know you reign on us in your name I listen to at least one koinonia message 
I know there are uncommon mysteries. Forget that it came through me. I have learned many things from my messages than many messages. I listen to it and I'm praying. And when is the time when apostle is prophesying, I kneel down and I lift my hands as he's speaking. See, listen, you have to learn what I'm telling you. Because this year, make up your mind not to cheat yourself. See, arrogance with no result is not leading. It's, it's like a man wearing suit with not even five naira is there. He say, it's just that I kept the money. So no, 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 no. I'm tired of lack of results. There is a higher standard God is gauging me with. God will not gauge me with the same standard he's gauging many of us. Because to whom much is given, much is expected. Are we together now? Thank God for all of the breakthroughs and the impartations. During my retreat for this year, I said any ministry I honor, we, it is like a rattling. We, you know how an earthquake is? Huh? An earthquake or a tsunami. That's what is going to happen in that church. Any ministry, including your church, man of God. My goodness. Yeah. To increase capacity. When you step in, you break chains. You shatter darkness. When you do that, for every ministration you go, there are 10 more waiting for you from it. You see that? Not the one that you just go and say, well, maybe the next one is September and you're just sitting. Of course, you don't use those things just as indices, but there is not enough fire. That's why. Because needs are still there. People suspect you have a track record of not producing results. So nobody's ready to invest in your anointing. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm saying. What have you learned? What truth do you know that can bail you out? What do you know that can bail you out? If I give you a mic right now, I say, come, teach us one kingdom mystery you have learned. What will it be? What will it be? You see that many of you are just enjoying fellowship, but you are not really holding on to something. Kai, he said, I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. I've held on to these things. It was the apostle Peter that said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. You can't tell me I'm not holding this, no matter how you deceive me. I'm holding it. I can feel it. I have become one with that experience. What do you know about the anointing of the Holy Spirit? We keep talking about the ability of God walking in a man. You jump at it, you fall under that anointing. But what do you know about it? What do you know about the anointing and getting a job? What do you know about the anointing and breakthrough in ministry? What have you learned? God asked me to pause with the series we'll start. Because some of us, what we need is not just a new message. What we need is getting back to say, look, I need to get this thing now. There are certain truths that I know and I will never waste my time in certain levels of ignorance. Every time I meet a wall before me, I know that there is an anointing I must invoke that will call a man. A man must appear for that door to open. So my prayer is very strategic and intentional. I don't pray stupid prayers. I pray with intelligence. Lord, where are the helpers? I call them. Because I know if a helper does not appear, that door will not open. And here comes the helper. Because I know how to call them. They never come on their own. They are always called. You have been waiting for them. You will wait forever. There is a mystery that calls helpers. Are you seeing that round? So our parents are waiting. God will send somebody to pay the rent. You will wait forever. There is a mystery. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Am I challenging you tonight? I want you to get this thing. I love you. That's why you see me teach this. I want you to hold on to something. Don't hold on to shadows. We are in a hurry to teach. We are in a hurry to do ministry. When we should sit down and learn. I tell you the truth, I wish that I can just have a vacation of four or five months. December's are usually happy periods when we round up program because that two or three weeks where I don't have to teach anybody, I now go back to feed my spirit. I preach an average of two or three messages every week aside from school of ministry we are resuming. So there are so many things sucking out of me. Time is so limited for me. 
but many of us have everything all the messages are there with the testimonies do you know you can sit down crying in a room and the light to liberate you is in a message lying down there and the angels are standing close to you and say activate us what is all this what do you need to learn again and you call your uncle he says i won't pick and you are there helpless and the angels are saying what is uncle we are here what is uncle have you not read in the bible that strangers shall feed your flock which one is uncle again but in your mind according to what you know if your uncle does not pick your call after two days you are dead who told you Aya. have you not had the ravens brought bread for elijah where did the ravens come from lack of light has limited us please hear what i'm saying god can raise helpers for you you have tied god How many pastors sit down and say it's, it's, it's because we are young people, it's because we have not put balloon around the church. That's why people are not coming. No. And we get angry and fight ourselves and move in ignorance and, and, and we have protocol and PA, no power, no grace, no understanding, no results. The trouble is that they now invite us for programs and you see people writing our ignorance and they go back to go and practice it and come back shocked and confused lean and hungry say i'm tired of guessing say it again i don't know how to beg you and make you believe what i'm saying i honor the lord for what he's doing in this ministry the crowds outside the crowds inside but brothers and sisters hear me and i say this with all humility never make a mistake to think it is guess it can be reproduced anywhere the same result it was founded upon mysteries not luck are we together yeah. jesus went to the desert the same crowds came he went to the mountain he went by the the people men and women climbed the mountain stayed there three days he had to now say let's feed them Is God speaking to us? Who told you God cannot change your story? Who told you that God cannot lift you up? There is something you don't know. I'm talking especially to the sisters. This our dependency mindset must die this year. This sitting down and hoping. Not, when is Valentine? Answer me. I'm not laughing. When is Valentine? Next when 14. Next week Friday. Next week Sunday. It's possible right now that many of us have expectations. And in our prayer, I'm not saying you are carnal, but you are just hoping that somebody will be the one to come and bail you out. Listen, this word will never profit you until the light breaks and the mystery behind it enters you. When you hold on to it, go to bed. You have entered your Sabbath. See, I don't care if at the time you are holding it, Bishop Oyedeko was there probably with one or two clothes, but when he caught that revelation, he said he shouted, I can never be poor. Can you say you can never be poor? Honestly. Can you say it? Me, yeah, I can say it, oh. My goodness. I wave poverty by, it wave me back. Deal done. Because for as long as there is one sick body, hmm, for as long as there is one life that must be changed, you see, there is something you can hold on to, brothers and sisters, that will wipe your tears. Look at Frank Edwards. He carried something he knew and sits upon that keyboard it, and bought cars with it and started an NGO with it. And his blessing lies with it. What have you been ignoring that is authorizing Satan in your life? What have you been ignoring that is stopping you from entering school? You are saying, Jam is hard. Keep quiet and think. What has been stopping you? I'm on my way to paradise. I'm 
I'm on my way to better days. Listen, let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. You see, my heart will bleed if we keep having people. I told you the Lord showed me that this year, Koinonia will be like a place of pilgrimage. I saw several people coming. It will be a painful thing to see pastors, businessmen come and giving testimonies and say, I just had three messages and it changed me. And all you do from now till December is to clap. Wow. Is it true? A miracle happened yesterday in a meeting. A lady who had a hole in her teeth, teeth supernaturally appeared before everybody. And the people were watching. I don't know what some of them thought I was. But let me tell you, with that kind of result, you will not be hungry. I promise you. Are we together? No, oh, no, no, no. Hunger, you and hunger will part away. You are not selling it. But somebody will be too grateful. And people were crying and just watching. And I sat down and I looked. I said, my goodness. When you catch this thing, bah, you have caught it. If it's not there, it's not there. Hallelujah. There's a particular university there are currently doing an election of the vice chancellor and all of that i think you guys will bear me witness when we're coming and several people were calling me oh i'm going to come will it work How? i mean these are people distinguished personalities that on a good day if i knock their office they should arrest me and go and lock me but something there is something they need and god didn't put it outside me every useful thing is inside me wisdom anointing i love the lord you can never take it and leave me we must go together if you need it, this body will enter a plane with it. We will all go together. That's why you should never, never, never not be successful in your life. Shout it again. I hate confusion. I hate confusion. See, Satan comes to you and manipulates your life. He studies your ignorance and uses it as his tools. He studies your ignorance. He can create illusions out of your ignorance. Satan is not a fool. He doesn't just run and come into your life. He takes a track record. He looks at the areas you don't know anything about or where you have not respected the authority of the word of God. And so he can look at you and say, do you know that until they do arrange for you on internet, a husband is not coming because he has studied and he has seen that you have not found out that light that male and female, he created them. That the Bible says, seek out of the book and read, none shall want her mate. He searches the bank of the word in you and does not find that mystery present. And he says, use this. And all of a sudden, you are a Christian. You love God. You are praying in tongues. But the next thing, you now start going to join all kinds of useless groups because you are looking for a, a husband. And he takes advantage of you. And he will bring a demon to your life and destroy you. You will marry in two months and suffer for the rest of your life because of ignorance. And you find out that in that one mistake, your ministry has been implicated. In that one mistake, your children have been implicated. Because they are going to grow under the atmosphere of a bad father. God is telling you this way. The authority over your life is saying this way. And people say submit. What have you ignored that is responsible for the strength of darkness in your life? I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, for I need you more and more. I'm so aware of my ignorance, so I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, Lord, I need you. I want to challenge you koinonia you have to be determined go back home tonight and write a list of all the major areas of your life where you truly know that you are not getting results humble yourself and pursue light are we together now are we together now forget about valentine or whatever it is of course celebrate it god bless you but i'm telling you this if you want a happy day february 14th every day of your life find out what has god said do i understand what is don't think what you think god said 
You see that? You can assume. It's like exams. Every student sits down. They say, start. And everybody is writing. And when you come out, the person will say, what was your answer? He said, say, five. He said, my own was three. And two of them believe they are right. It's left for the lecturer. By the time you see zero, what does that mean? It means you were wrong. You say, ah, but the man didn't mark my script. Well, you still got zero. Everybody who scored five got it. For you did your calculation and arrived at three, meaning you failed. You didn't get it well. It's up to you to adjust and say, no, no, no. I think I missed something. Or be arrogant and say it's a bad man waiting for another man. Many of us never will admit that we are ignorant. It doesn't cost me anything. You, you don't know how I, whenever God tells me, son, I think you need to know more. There is a dimension of me you do not know here and you have to correct it. I jump at it. I almost spend a vigil online searching for everything, looking for any koinonia message that relates to that. If God says, son, you like ladies this night, be like him. Where are all those hot messages I preach on character? Be like him. Um, um, the, uh, he heaven and hell, realities of heaven and hell. Part one and two. That's what I will listen to till tomorrow. Till it irons out that dimension in me. You don't tremble at his word. That's why we don't change. When you look at ministries and see the ministries that there is the anointing on their life. You see what is happening. You just sit down. You see, you will never preach people into running away from results. Because you are not getting it. If I am not getting results in my life right now, and Pastor Femi is getting results, and I try to trivialize what he's doing to make you consider him unserious, I'm only joking. Because the truth is, you have problems. And do you know members know where to get answers? Oh, yes. They know where to get answers. I told you, was it last week or week before last, that if I am an unbeliever, when I'm sick, I promise you I'll go to Babalao. I won't do it in the secret. All these go to the secret. I will do it openly. Let camera even follow me. I will go there. And then I'll wait for the one person who will come to challenge me. And I'll bring another person as sick as me. And say, I will kneel down and apologize to you if you heal him. Otherwise, go back home. As simple as that. Are we together? I foresee that a time will come. That thing will happen in church. Members will hold charm and come for service with it. The moment they are talking before altar call, somebody will stand up and say, Sir, this guy I bought for you, this is the charm that brought it. And I can throw it if you can prove it otherwise. That's what happened between Moses and Pharaoh. He had to take the rod and Pharaoh said, Get out of this place. You grew up, you ate the food that this God, Ra, brought. Now you are coming to destroy it. And Moses said, I found someone higher. Nobody great, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Listen, Moses said, as at that time, I thought Ra was the highest of the gods. And so my allegiance, but I found, I found somebody in the wilderness. And he called himself, I am. And he said that he's coming to show his sovereignty. And when he swallowed up this, and after nine, ten plagues, Pharaoh had to give up. Pastors, let's stop deceiving people. We know where we are telling the truth and where we are not telling the truth. We know where we have results and where we don't have results. Let's admit it and not explain. Creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. It's waiting for the manifestation. There are people who have traveled from far and come for this meeting now. Some of them have come desperate to receive something. Imagine if all these people traveled all the way and then they just go back like that. If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you will be very frustrated in your Christian journey. Because the end of every assimilation of truth is that it produces a result for you. By the time you get up and go home, now you already know that every time you see your father misbehaving, you now know because you've received superior intelligence that this man is not acting on his own volition. 
he's been influenced by powers you see the devil can no longer use his habit to keep the spirit of anger in you because another light has delivered you so when you come out from the place of prayer and he starts ranting like a beast you know you already have superior intelligence and you find out that satan was using that to keep the spirit of anger so he would destroy you but now another light has delivered you and then number two you now know that he's not fighting with him physically and saying daddy i wound you the moment he says that you know where to go and all of a sudden your father will see you and he's as if he's afraid there's something wrong but there are many of us you leave koinonia you come and you are fighting you slap your father you beat why are you acting in ignorance is god speaking to us now have you not noticed how every time you are pressing into God, it looks like there are people all around you who can station themselves to do things that would destroy you. They are trying to fight something. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that light will give you peace, 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 peace. It will swallow away fear from your life and it will give you peace. When you have a revelation, for instance, hear me, that no human being, no man born of a woman can take your life. Not with enchantment. I can only imagine how many places my name has been called in different altars. Maybe when I'm traveling now, they now say die. It's difficult to kill me. I look just physical, but they that are with me, the mysteries that surround me are many many like you see obama you can just see him walking you try to shoot him before you leave the gun you are dead you don't know who was watching you you just know they shot you you didn't see anybody but a bullet entered you because what is more than what you are seeing koinonia hear me i want you to hold your bible please hold your bible inside and outside hold your bible say after me lord jesus this year i pray that the mysteries that would have to be opened for my destiny to change hidden in this word may they be open for me the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of influence the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of favor the mysteries of advancement the mysteries of breakthrough the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of grace release it upon me oh god if god answers that prayer you'll be a wonder this year because it will surprise you it's not because there is nobody to give you the job there is something you have not done the earlier you admit it the faster and the better for you oh there's one guy that said i should just hold on when a job when there's job interview he will give me that's too costly you are living your life at the mercy of somebody if it now doesn't work you will hate the person why don't you live forget about all these things and wait upon god are we together now Oh, a lecturer promised me that this time around I will get A in my project. What if that lecturer is sick and is not there during your defense? Then you fail. Woe to him that puts his strength in a man. Oh, God said I'm going to enter the house. How do you think you are going to enter the house? Just because you think you are earning 50,000. Can 50,000 give you a house? You too ask yourself. Look at, see, this is how foolish, I'm sorry to say it, but this is how foolish some of our parents are. They, 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 whenever they are, they are looking at their salary, oh, 50,000, so let's calculate. It will never work that way. The devil will use it to destroy you. One sickness will wipe away the budget and the devil will keep mocking us. You've raised 500,000. One sickness will wipe it away. But you can walk certain principles and a man will lack his sleep in the night. And get up in the morning and say sorry i don't know who this person is but the lord has called me and said pastor alpha god has said i should change your story 
and you'll be sitting there dumbfounded and God will say you ask for it I said ask and you shall receive but the Bible says that we not pray amiss mothers fathers everybody please hear me there is a way out of everything I believe there is a way out of everything sister that marital delay in your family can be broken to pieces if a certain kind of revelation just one more thing I'll add to us and we'll pray one of the mysteries that I have learned in my life that has changed my life forever is the discernment of the body of Christ I know there are many mysteries I keep repeating these things because I want your life to change all men are not equal criticize me but just listen all men are not equal if you take that mindset this is not supposed to be a bad statement please don't misunderstand me I wish it were a lie but it's the truth all men are not equal it was the apostle that was teaching the church in Corinth he said because you cannot discern the Lord's body the organogram of, and the structure he said for this cause for not discerning I'm not talking of holy communion for not discerning the body and the individuals that have been stationed there who are carriers of your breakthrough he said some are weak how many people have died today because they have not discerned what God has put in the body it's like a table if you come to eat on the table is it not what you know that you will eat you see something looking yellow you are not sure and you will leave it there and later you find out that that thing is good for your health that's how we are listen I'm talking about light and illumination the Bible says let the word of Christ dwell in us in all richness Colossians 3 16 but you see one of the greatest blessings of God to the church outside the Holy Spirit is the positioning of gifts in the body please listen to me I've told you that there are two ministries you must encounter for your destiny to open the moment you meet Christ there are two ministries you must encounter the apostolic and the prophetic the Bible says the church was built with a very definite system it says Christ being the chief cornerstone and directly above it are foundations the apostles and the prophets now that's not to say other um, members of the body is the same thing you don't give your life to the Holy Spirit you don't come and say Holy Spirit you died for me he didn't die for you although they are equal with God but salvation has been put in no other name there is an office that ministers salvation are we together that's how it is you have passed listen there are certain dimensions in life you can never take yourself you hear me say this thing all the time yet no matter how arrogant you are no man can bless himself there are certain dimensions that it will take a representative of these ministries it's an election by grace to open up certain doors for you and you will walk in it as if the devil never existed there are many churches who have done everything but ignore these ministries and many of you have been trained to criticize all kinds I've, I've told you here just keep quiet when it comes to the body of Christ serve God with truth and dignity there are many of our parents that are grounded God will invite a man to their churches and they will look at the person and say this young guy or God will invite somebody who will come and maybe the person cannot speak English very well and they now sit down intellectually and the man is teaching he may not be able to talk very well but there is an office he occupies are we together now he may talk and mix it with language and you are there calculating intellectually say i thought I, I need somebody with rema tell me greek and hebrew words whereas the person sent he came out dressed like john like 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 a prophet even jesus could not ignore the ministry of john and excel because when he came he looked for the one who that mantle was upon that foundational mantle john said ah i've seen you say no suffer it to be so I, I will not break protocol. Jesus would have been surprised if he didn't pass through John. Yeah. 
when it was time the holy ghost spoke to certain apostolic council separate me paul and barnabas he spoke to them there was something they did upon paul and barnabas did you know that agabus had daughters that were prophets but they never excelled in ministry look at that they died with their prophetic grace because although they were prophets they ignored the structure of the body listen there are many people the bible talked about for a little time and you never had them again that's why some of us are where we are gods of ourselves with our own rema bragging all around there was a pastor friend i used to watch him um the guy loves me so much he admires me but I think for a very long time I used to see him. He just comes around, laughs around when they are prophesying or speaking. He's even embarrassed sometimes to lift his hand. He just, he just lifts his hands as if he's waving. And I knew that this guy would never receive anything. In his mind, he thinks he will receive. Let me tell you something. There are requirements from receiving from these gifts. One of the requirements is honor. 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 You must honor both the person and the office. He says he please this is not human worship i don't want to i have no business i wish i were not the one preaching this i wish we were just hearing a tape so that you will believe it's true i have seen listen i have passed so many people who there is enough grace to wipe their tears and their families and i've been shocked the way the anointing was locked up within me as i watched these families go down in penury because honor is the key that releases the anointing. Jesus entered certain cities and passed like this. A woman was pressing his garment and other people were looking at him. What have you ignored that has refused your door from opening? Please hear what I'm saying, Koinonia. Don't wait until after 10 years of miserable failure and then you now think and say, let me listen to this message hear it now and rise wake up and leave rise above your contemporaries as if the devil does not exist a few who have learned this key have broken every limitation and barrier the bible says for this cause many are weak when it was time when sickness when the serpents were destroying the people nothing happened to moses question what did the snake see that made them not to bite moses it's in your bible Right? That he told him, lift up a serpent. Is it not true? Look at how people were immune in the Bible. Things were happening to others. Elijah, there was famine. He never was even concerned about the famine. Because he knew that nothing would happen to him. There was famine in Samaria. Elisha came. He was not saying, Ay, I'm dying. Give me food. He came and saw women eating their children and said, what happened? There was another mystery that gave him supply. Brothers and sisters, there is a way out of every situation in your life. You can come to a man of God to pray for you. But you can just come as if you are coming to somebody who manufactures charm. Do you know even if Jesus appears right now, there are people who encounter him and still go back unchanged? Yes, absolutely. Don't you think because he's Jesus, he will change? The law is still the same. If you cannot honor his representatives, then you do not honor him. The result will still be the same. Who told, look at how many parents please you're a pastor how think of how many parents in your church or how many elderly people have come to meet you to say man of god you see let me tell you something many people just believe that ministers and, and, and newspapers have made this happen they believe ministers of the gospel are daft people fraudulent people how to manipulate money from members and enrich themselves that's the mindset newspaper gives and many people carry that faulty mindset and some of us as young as we are that's our thinking look how our families are suffering you pray individually and say god help god said i answered the prayer sins open your eyes and see you have ignored ministries that can wipe your tears you are there a, 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 a program that you will finish five years you are still there seven years on your verge of moving you have never said for once can i not is there no system in the kingdom to bail me out 
for this cause i'm just sharing with you one mystery i think this is the cheapest of all mysteries because you don't even have to be intelligent to access this i have watched with shock the way i have ministered to people and their lives have changed a, a woman gave a testimony and this is true this is I, do, I, I don't mean it in any idolatry the woman said her daughter had been telling her to listen to one koinonia message and she said she always used to ignore it because you know she had problem with praying in tongues and all of that you, you know what i'm saying and one day things got bad and she said she was listening to one message in her dream that her daughter was listening to and then god was you know using my voice to just challenge her and say go and listen to that message and change your story she said she told her daughter to transfer it into her phone listen there was someone that had owed her for a long time as soon as she transferred that text message just the text as in uh, you know how it, you transfer a message it just touched her phone that was how the person called her and said where are you come and meet me at the bank the woman said this is a lie what is going on here it will only work for those who already have honor presiding them otherwise you will pass it like this and move on. when the child of the shunammite woman died she was not confused she knew where to run to she said saddle your ass he said don't stop whoever asks you is all well say it is well and he sent gehazi gehazi came and looked at the woman he says it's all well say it's well give me a chance i know the person i'm looking for and she went there and said you represented something in the spirit that brought this child otherwise this child would never have come know what to do with this child she put his office under pressure elisha tried everything spoke the child refused to wake up and he took his mantle he said even if it's for me to be foolish see there is a way you can honor a man of god and put pressure on his office not anoint him his office it will force him to release something into your life when i say honor i don't mean money a deep a deep seated there are few men of god i've met in my life and the way i honored them when they were speaking and blessing me i knew it came from their spirit spirit i'll find somewhere to stop because i want us to pray brothers and sisters results are possible in the spirit it's not a matter of luck it's time for you to start knowing what you are not doing the mystery of the communion many of us take communion just as something they do in church get me wafers get me zobo okay there's five alive bring it and they're like, oh god thank you and you just throw it you just took breakfast whereas it has delivered a lot of people tithing you do it but not with understanding so the moment promise comes to stand here or anybody you just you are just waiting those who are tight as you come and stand and although you are supposed you are doing something spiritual it's not working because it's not done the bible says honor the lord he didn't say bribe him you squeeze your envelope you just come and stand and say oh yeah god take no when abraham met melchizedek king of salem that ancient city listen do you know it was after he gave the tithe immediately god spoke to him and said fear not he was teaching him a mystery he said i'm about to bless you it takes courage to be prosperous because you are about to be controversial so fear not there is something i'm about to open in your life that will make people say well, when did it happen he said don't be afraid I know I'm about to bless you, but my first instruction is fear not. You have done something that is about to bring prosperity. People will not understand the mystery. So be courageous to take the criticisms. Because I'm about to change your life. He said, I am your exceeding great reward. Abraham is so intelligent. The moment God said, I am your exceeding great reward. It, the, Abraham started thinking generational blessings because he knew that blessing was too much. He said, God, so let's talk about my future because I know that a man is a failure until he has a successor. You are now beginning to speak generational. Where is the child? And God says, ah, who is this man that, ha that has my mind? That's how to do business with God. You have so aligned, you understand the language of God. Look at what Solomon did. When it came to Solomon, Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart. I am little. Let me lead your people. He knew where to touch God. Ah, 
God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Gave him riches, wealth, and honor. Gave him, you see why Solomon was blessed? He had understanding. Understanding. He was an impartation. Just one mystery I've shared with you. Do you know, if you hold on to this mystery, this law of honor, this year alone, you will get more results than many people get in their lifetime, I promise you. Just this law. Just this law. Just this law. Something you are ignoring is allowing tragedies to continue in your life. Something you are refusing to hear is keeping you bound sister it's not like a man cannot come there is something you are ignoring if you will make that adjustment tonight god will surprise you there are brothers here there are things you are ignoring you don't pay attention to instructions there are people inside and outside you don't approach god with a stubborn heart you approach god with a childlike heart please koinonia hear me i'm about to pray for you for heaven's sake believe the things you hear me say i love you too much to mislead you gentiles please give us isaiah 60 again verse 3 this is the year that gentiles should come to your light this is the year it should happen that you see somebody get up and come and meet you i mean gentiles coming to your light they come with their blessings when jesus was born the wise men saw his star they started looking for it with gold frankincense when they looked at jesus they looked at a baby but they were wise enough to know this is not a baby they started bowing down they didn't wait until he became an adult they didn't say let's see let's watch if he becomes a serious man they knew that this guy is the one that was prophesied and they started bowing down if wise men could bow to a baby bow to certain principles and change your life forever hallelujah do you believe what i shared with you tonight please the body of christ is not lacking revelation what we are lacking is understanding and the grace to do to live by the truth we know he said now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them i now see why god constrained me i was to start another series i mean an explosive series and god was just constraining me no let the people get this thing otherwise you keep dumping revelation after revelation and you know what i'm doing to you the more i keep giving you revelations without probing your reception a time will come you will be so puffed up of knowledge without any result and it will be dangerous hallelujah Saul Kai oh my goodness Saul's donkey was missing his father Kish brothers and sisters hear me there was no hope of finding that donkey I hope you know naturally speaking three days they could not find the donkey and they say you know what let's not waste our time there is a man there is a man this man there is a prophet there is a man of god and they said ah, there's nothing to take to him they were smart enough and the moment they went to the gates at the gates they saw him and he looked at them do you know what he told them he said go and wait for me and i will tell you everything in your heart do you know what is a mountain to you is within the grace of somebody to stamp it for you what looks like a mountain you are there complaining about house rent and God is saying, no, 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 no. Everybody is growing, but there are people who have been graced to trivialize your challenges if you have the eyes to see. Look at, at once they met Samuel. Samuel said, I will tell you every, he didn't say, I will sit down for counseling. He said, just go up there, wait for me. I will tell you what is in your heart. And when he went there, their biggest problem became the smallest. He said, I know you came for restoration. Forget about that. That's not the issue. The donkey has been found. Is that a human being? You think that's a human being talking? No, that's a system. It's not a man. It's a system in a human body. The same thing with Melchizedek. You think Melchizedek was just a man? Just a man older than Abraham? How can a man bless a man and, and say possessor of heavens and earth? Can a man bless another man like that? 
a man that even Christ associated himself with the Bible says his priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek read your Bible and see all these strange men Elijah Noah I've taught you do you know what it means for a man to build an ark that is equivalent to three stadiums three stadiums story building three stadiums alone in hundred years he built it is that a normal human being made of gopher wood so you know why he cursed his son i've told you he didn't curse his son just because he saw his nakedness there was something the son saw is a mystery are we together now when jezebel was rising to judge people elijah shows up the tishbite the bible calls him you think that's a normal human being he appears again and he appears again in revelation what of enoch the seventh man from creation he used to walk among them and one day they didn't find him just imagine one day we don't find aaron no grave no nothing it's after he leaves we may say ah so this guy we have been calling aaron that's what happened to jesus when he resurrected people looked at him and said my goodness so it is true see when we get to heaven one of the shock for people is when god shows the the spiritual content of some of the people that were walking on the earth some of us will put our hands on our head and say i lived with this guy forever I, he was my roommate yet i didn't have the eyes to see i was in his church i was even an usher there was capacity like this to help me look at gehazi foolish man if he wanted money if if you are with a master that blesses somebody and you want money is it not to kneel down and beg rather than going to lie you see why he's foolish very stupid man that's why he didn't receive any man to a man who can wipe a rich man's story would not you just kneel down and say my father change my story and he said is it not because the lord has anointed you to be king poured oil upon him and say as you go you will find two men they will appear from nowhere the word created them look at how these guys manipulated nature at their at the frequency of their will they were like gods they laughed at elisha and said you have bald head he he created a beer a sheep beer he came out at the children and disappeared what kind the bible says in hebrews 11 he said the earth is not worthy of this kind of people you see them walk the earth is not worthy honor something you are ignoring is destroying your life we are going to pray the purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery is a mystery away it can keep that mountain there forever or shatter it I have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours less than 24 hours less than 24 hours what are you ignoring some of you your family members have ignored you that's why things have not changed they have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life so every time you step in your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace but they have refused to acknowledge it brothers and sisters although they are your mothers and fathers things will never change until they come into that recognition please rise up on your feet this prayer session we're entering i want you to pray with all your heart Lift up your hands and thank the Lord for this word tonight. Illumination. The grace that comes, hear me, when men have an understanding. The grace that comes when people can honor. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I like you to lift your voice and pray and say lord i know that the mountain before me can live 
I just don't know how to let it go, but I want it to go in this year. Lift your voice and pray. This mountain standing before me, there is a way out. Pray, lift your ministry, lift your academics, lift your job, lift everything before God. Lord, I know I've been trying and trying and trying. I've been trying, I've done all I know to do. But tonight I admit, I admit, I, just show me, oh God, show me what I need to do. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Jesus brought you here to change your life forever. Light, 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 light. Sika barato soto predege de bele de bos. Saka prata seta le pratika de koshoto prada na bala na bala na ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results be very sincere with god and say lord there has to be a way out of this lift your voice and pray please take it serious koinonia lord i've not seen the anointing in my life pray lord i'm tired of struggling i lay hands on the sick and nothing happens i prayed and fasted nothing is happening Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen. It's just not changing. No matter what I do, I know something is wrong. Lord, favor. I've not caught the mystery of favor. Everybody hates me. Everybody runs away from me. Even those who want to help me change their mind. Something must be wrong somewhere. I admit tonight that I need help. Lord, I pray for my academic. It's been from one tragedy to another. There, there's got to be a way out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we are still praying. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you. I'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life in strategic areas i ask for grace i ask for grace pray grace lord i will sit down with this issue of finances and resolve it once and for all i will sit with this issue of powerlessness this issue of lack of church growth this issue of not having a message to preach this issue of failure all around Aparato soto prende que de balada bosh. Rakata parada bosh. Come on, be angry with the challenges in your life and pray. Pray, pray. I was studying. I wanted to find out the secret of church growth. I've heard people say it. I've listened to them. I couldn't quite get the light they got and one time I was praying and the Spirit of God took me to mark one two three and it was like an anointing that came I knew I had gotten it I knew I had gotten it when people talk about prosperity most of the scriptures in Deuteronomy 8 18 I've not gotten light from that scripture of God and God will take you through that word to somewhere else that becomes your access point out Are we together?
two more prayer points you're going to pray and say lord every principle i have ignored that is responsible for where i am now i receive grace to make amendments go ahead and pray many of us have ignored the law of honor you have not discerned the body lord i cry for grace tonight every principle that should have opened a door for me i ignored it out of pride i ignored it out of ignorance i i ignored it out of complacency and laziness tonight oh god i cry tonight oh god i cry pray pray Hallelujah. He said, I commend you. I commend you to the word of his grace. He said, He's able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you have ignored the word and you've gone around looking for things that only the word can give or you have been in close touch with the word but just growing in knowledge without revelation revelation is not knowing what scripture has said revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life that's revelation god said it's not revelation it's prophecy it takes understanding to convert prophecy into manifestation. God said is prophecy, not revelation. Revelation is where you have caught the mystery of translating that prophecy into a into a, a manifestation in your life. Many of us are carrying God said wonderful, but prophecy has a dynamics to its manifestation. There is a there is an alignment. There is a path you have to play. Please pray again and say, Lord, what have I ignored that is responsible for where I am? Open my eyes. I will make amends. I will make amends in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. Pray. Ebrako soto braske baria da balada bash. Raka barado soto preshe pereke tele bosh. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm about to pray for you. Do you know that there is a relationship between soul winning and answered prayer? Are we together? This is just one mystery that can explain the reason why many of us are not getting results in prayer. There is a direct relationship between saving souls genuinely and answered prayers. A man can save souls and walk his way into unending breakthrough. Just like that. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, right? When you read from verse 3 there about it says they that be wise will shine like the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore that's a mystery that any man who is committed to turning men to righteousness must shine as the stars he said he that winneth souls is wise and Solomon speaking of wisdom said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice just for winning souls you are entitled for a baptism of wisdom and many of us want to be wise we want to do all of that and you watch sinners go to hell you are coming for meeting and you watch people around you are not passionate you are embarrassed the Bible says, he that is ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Not on the last day. He is before the father making advocacy for you. 
He says, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Are we together now? Say, Lord, I receive grace to be doggedly involved in anywhere your heart is. Many of us don't know that the key to get God's heart is be involved where his heart is. God is in the business of making sure many come to righteousness. You can't stand in your camp alone and say, God, come and give me tea. Come and give me bread. And God is saying, the time is running out. There are people going to hell. This is the direction I'm facing. If you want me to see you, turn around and come here. Don't just stand behind there. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, let, let me run at your heartbeat. Let me run at your heartbeat. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Not just my own agenda. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Souls. Souls. Transform. Souls. Genuinely saved. Souls. Established in righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. Please be committed to soul winning. Not just preaching to people. Be committed and bring them to the house of God to be established. Do this for just one month and you will see breakthroughs that will surprise you. Believe me when I tell you this. Believe me. Look at churches that don't win souls. They never grow. They never grow. There's no reason to grow. Thank God for the evangelism. But I want to step into a new level of soul winning that is not just by talking to people one by one. Miracles commanding souls. Miracles commanding souls. You enter a city and a popular madman that everybody knows when he's healed and sound and filled with the Holy Ghost, that is evangelism for one year. No devil can deny that result. It's easy to ship a madman from somewhere and they can say you stage manage it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When your own father who you know is a drunkard and nothing in this world will change the person and you drag him to Koinonia and in five minutes he's shivering under the anointing and that devil is getting out. There is no other evangelism to that family than that one. They will go back and they will say God is alive. Even the one who is stubborn and not born again will say I saw my father under the anointing confessing Jesus I should get born again too. We must enter a level where we bring major results for the kingdom. Not little results here and there that we keep priding ourselves in. Major testimonies for the kingdom. Not just for self-aggrandizement, but so that one miracle can bring a million souls. One miracle can transform a whole family. I may not have the opportunity to come to everybody's family but imagine that you live today with a sickness by five o'clock when you were coming everybody saw you with that disease by nine or ten you are going back free when you go back home who can deny that God is alive when Pharaoh saw the miraculous hand of God Pharaoh broke down and said God is alive you know why they doubt the reality of God in the church? Because everything we are doing, unbelievers can do. So there is no reason why they should say it's spectacular. Have you not seen unbelievers who are orators? Compared to them, we are, we are playing child's play. There are people who have crammed the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, of heart. They are not Christians. They are just showing you how powerful their mind is. I mean, so what, what are you going to use to prove to those people that Jesus is alive? But when you do what no man can do, they know you must be assisted by an agency that is not human. Please, if you're a pastor here, let me encourage you. Whether you think you are called into the miracle ministry or not, stop bragging and move, moving forward to do man of God. 
go back to the secret place and say lord unction grace i have revelation but i need results when we don't have results we mock god and we mock ourselves that's why the pews of many ministries are empty because people are not idiots especially in this 2016 we may not be there yet but let your members see you striving let them see that shepherd heart genuinely that you are contending for something real is god blessing us today and so i welcome you to a feast of miracles tonight believe me <laughs> You see, ba, let me tell you something. When you have a key in the spirit, you know you have the key. If you do not have, admit you do not have and look for it. I know the things I do not have and I'm on a desperate, unashamed pursuit to finding them. But the things that you have, you can hold it and no man can take it away from you. Jesus said, I have the power to lay it down. And the power to pick it up so while you watch the miracles happen i know that there are several people in ministry please don't just come and entertain yourself let there be a cry in your spirit lord there can be a new dimension in my life there can be a new dimension you're a businessman there can be a new dimension again i challenge you to be gifted is not enough you need an anointing an anointing one supernatural manifestation of the Holy Ghost and his power upon your life will bring you that prayer request you have been praying for including finances one genuine miracle one person's life whom you transform someone can look at you and say I don't care what you read I shook hands with you yesterday and my life changed. Come and walk in my company. See, never allow what happens in the society make us become carnal. You know, people are gradually reducing God to a scientific, he must be explained by A plus B. The God we serve is spiritual. And the Bible says, they that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. The God that we serve is a supernatural God. Are we together? So everything is supernatural. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may bring glory to you. A miracle is what happens when the power of God comes face to face with a situation. It's a contention of superiority. And the power of God represents his might in a situation. And he will always prevail. When a miracle happens, let me tell you, God is greatly glorified. Critics may say what they want to say. But a miracle done from a heart of love and a genuine desire to please God brings glory to God in no small way. You are the miracle walker. You are the miracle walker. Will you come and do a miracle, a miracle today? You will do a miracle, a miracle today. You are the destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny, my destiny today? You will change my destiny, my destiny today. The Lord spoke to me a few weeks ago and said, Son, if you continue with me, a time will come you will bring miracles for nations. Nations. You will bring miracles for nations, not just for individuals. And the Lord told me that I am shifting you from cities to territories. Territories. Territorial unctions where you bring miracles for territories when you step into a territory it doesn't matter the church that hosts you it doesn't matter what meeting brings you 
if you remain faithful and you remain hungry I will give you that unction for territories why do I say this to encourage you that every one of us who presses genuinely I am surprised when I see how complacent many people are and I tell them compared to what are you making this noise do you know how many people don't get healed in our meetings if we knew it we'll be ashamed of ourselves as men of God if there are hundred sick people here and ten people get healed it's a shame to the anointing it's not something to brag about and say somebody was healed no. I will go back to God crying in sackcloth and ashes and say Lord grant me grace see let me tell you these are the kind of people who will be trusted with the power of God hallelujah there is enough unction and grace in this house and available upon this altar to reveal Jesus to your situation it's up to your heart to open to be open don't sit down arguing around and wondering will he touch me do you think God would have gathered these people just to play games even if you were God if you saw a crowd gathered like this hungry waiting for you would you leave them that way hallelujah please pray in one minute before we continue and say Lord my heart is open don't bow your head pray pray seriously pray seriously Lord, it is within your power to wipe my tears. Help them, please. Help those under the anointing there. It is within your power to help me. <laughs> you move mountains. You cause walls to fall. And with your power, you perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you made you made a way when our backs were on the wall and it looked as if it was all gone you And we're standing here only because you made you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles you perform miracles and there is nothing that's impossible and we stand What is that mountain that has stood before you people of God please hear me if God cannot crumble that mountain 
then I think he does not deserve to be God. But you see, the thing is, he will not crumble the mountain by default. You've got to press with your heart opened genuinely and say, Lord, please step into my life and do a miracle. Do a miracle. He only responds to the heart that cries. He only responds to the heart that pants after him. You've written several requests and you've prayed. But I want you to cry to the God of heaven and say, Father, give me a visitation. Lift your voice and pray. and get glory out of it lift your voice and pray give me a miracle and let the miracle be an opportunity for you to get glory out of my life let my healing tonight be an opportunity for your name to be lifted let my deliverance tonight be an opportunity for you to be lifted. Waymaker, open a door for me for the sake of your glory. And the struggles in my life. Here is an opportunity for you to be glorified. Are you praying inside, outside? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. You can vow your way into a miracle by saying lord i vow that if you give me a miracle i will not be silent with it let me tell you these are the kinds of prayers that god wants not a testimony that you brag around and make noise for yourself you can vow your way into breakthrough and say lord change my story and i must stand before your people to testify lift your voice and pray Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Wipe my tears and take the glory. Let them that have mocked your grace upon my life be put to shame through this testimony. Awesome God, how great Thou art! You alone, mighty are Your miracles. Stand in all of Your holy name, Lord. We 
Before we begin to minister, please bring out your prayer request and hold it. We are going to pray for five minutes. If you have not written one, you can write one. Bring out your prayer request. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. We are going to pray. Let me tell you something. We have seen dramatic breakthroughs. It's a revelation that God gave. We are not just writing requests for nothing. People's destinies have changed. God has wiped the tears of families and individuals. Hallelujah. I'd like you to hold your prayer request and in one minute cry and say, Lord, everything, everything written must be turned to a testimony. Not some. Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not too late to write. Those following online, make sure you have your requests. He said, make your request known. Make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, everything. 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 Kappa, ta, ta, ta. One by one. One by one. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. One by one. By the unction. The anointing that is in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please keep it down. And lift your voice. And everything you do not want to see in your life. Begin to release it to leave you right now. Before we pray, everything, everything, everything you are tired of seeing in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Expect to be healed. Expect to be delivered. Let me tell you something. Deliverance is very powerful when it is done scripturally and is done biblically because it's a separation between men and the forces that cause their problems. There are forces that are responsible for the problems, the challenges in people's lives. There are, there are forces. There are forces. And in a few minutes from now, we are going to begin to pray. I tell you, fire will burn in this place. Fire will burn in this place. And no devil will be able to stand. There are people whose lives must change. That's why we came. That's why we came. That's why we came. That's why we came. 
One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Every spirit responsible for my pain, you are under arrest tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Every spirit. Every spirit responsible for my failures responsible for the limitation in my life hallelujah Please lift your hands, everybody. Don't say anything, just lift your hands. Please, everybody, if you can. If you, if you are doing something that doesn't allow you, that's all right. But please lift your hand. Don't allow the devil cheat you in this time, please. Don't allow the devil cheat you. When you hear me ministry, minister like this, is because I'm under the anointing of the Spirit. These are not things I'm doing of my own accord. It is the foolishness of spiritual things that produce results. Keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. The first set of people that God will step into right now are people that God is breaking. I'm seeing, I'm seeing God break delay. I'm seeing chains on people's legs. And the Lord said, just lift your hands and he will locate them by himself. So keep your hands up. Father, I have done what you have told me to do. Right now, inside and outside. Right now. Right now, inside and outside. I stretch my hands. Bring them out. Right now. Everyone whose feet has been chained, kaparataka, zekete kete repose, barekete bo supaya. I unloose those chains now. I untie those chains now. I untie those chains right now. Bring them out. The second overflow. God is touching a lady so dramatically. Delay, 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 delay. You can't stand the anointing tonight. You can't stand the anointing tonight. Oh, there is grace in this house to challenge every altar of delay that has tied down the lives and the destinies of people. You must go forward. You must go forward. You must go forward. You must go forward. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. Keep your hands lifted. I'm seeing altars on fire and the Lord said it belongs to families Lord where are the families right now right now let the fire of God locate them right now where are these families I stand by this anointing and I command everywhere across this building every family under the siege of witchcraft every family under the siege of witchcraft fire comes upon that altar fire comes upon that altar God is saving people right now the power of the Holy Ghost is at work in this place. You can't be the same. You can't be the same. Hallelujah. Keep your hands down. God is doing a quick work. Only ladies, lift your hands. Only ladies, lift your hands. Please lift your hands. Ladies represent gates in the spirit. And there are destinies whose gates have been closed. Right now I'm about to speak. In the name of Jesus, 
upon every lady here upon every lady here who the gate has been closed i command right now be open be open be open many of you will be surprised what will happen to you right now sisters you represent gates 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 young and old young and old may those gates be open now may those gates be open now May those gates be open now. May those gates be open now. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. lift your hands the Lord is showing me something very I've prayed about this in one miracle service there are people here whose destinies have been exchanged for others I pray right now wherever they are at least 40 people 40 people wherever they are right now I command a reversal I command a reversal. Fire, fire, fire falls upon people. Fire, every destiny that has been exchanged in the realm of the spirit. Every destiny that has been exchanged in the name of Jesus. Every load you are carrying that is not yours in the name of Jesus, it returns back to the sender. Every thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Hallelujah. I tell you miracles are happening here mighty mighty miracles mighty miracles mighty miracles all those out here all the spirits tying down your destinies at the count of three this is miracle service they live now. I speak in the realm of the spirit. One, two, go, go, go. Out of them. Out of them. Go forever. Release their destinies. Chains be broken. Release their destinies. Come down, and song all shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. No spirit will hide today. The power of God is strong in this place to bring strange visitations. Lift your hands, everyone. There are men. It's not just that you are delayed. You are not even moving at all. I want to pray. And the prayer I'm praying now is an unction that will begin to move people forward. An unction that will begin to move people forward. But first, the strong man that has kept families down 
must be dislodged. Lift your hands. I pray right now. Whoever is under the influence of any spirit and any power that is causing any retrogression and non-progress. Right now as I pray, fire comes upon them. In the name of Jesus, inside and outside, take the fire now. Take the fire now. Take the fire now. Hallelujah. 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 I'm seeing someone they brought here. I don't know if the person has a mental problem or is mad. Is there someone like that? There's someone they brought like a mental problem. Mad. A mad person. Where is the person? Bring the person. It's time for a miracle. This is a mad person. Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You were the victor's crown I'm seeing a man that they brought here. It's like he has a problem walking very well. Is there someone like that? It's like he has a problem walking very well. A man, I don't know if there's pains or is that he cannot walk completely. Is there such a person, please? We have to hurry up. I want us to finish in good time. Is there such a person? Hold on. Let me just, is there such a person? outside he can't walk he can't walk he's paralyzed huh what who brought him come come quickly please what's the situation What's the situation? Listen, sir. It's as loud as you can. Joseph recent last week I visited him then at Kano with his wife. And they informed him in the village that he's paralyzed. This man is a policeman. Is he a policeman? No, we forget I'm seeing... his cardigan for, from Kano. So we call okay. the, the custom. I'm seeing him that. where okay. He's the custom officer What's wrong with him now? Presently now can he, he hear me? We can hear you, sir, boy. Can okay. you and have Look to... at me. Can you hear me? No, no, hold on. Can you hear me? Where are you from? Yeah, from Kano, sir. Kano, you yes. came from Kano? Yes, sir. Look at me, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, look at me. Since when could he not walk? Wife, come, please. This was husband for how long? This is almost a month now. But the leg is just two weeks now. The leg is two weeks. Yes. It's okay. I'm seeing stroke. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, look at me. Look at me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? The first miracle is for him to hear what I'm saying. Something has affected his mind. He cannot even hear. Huh? He can't even talk. He can't hear. He can't talk. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that deaf and dumb spirit to leave you. To leave you. Sir, look at me. Look at me. Can you hear how, sir? Huh? Look at me. Can you look at me? Try to move your legs. Can you? Can you try to move your legs? Can you try to do what I'm doing? Try to move your legs. Talk to him that I want to pray for him. Who is this? That's so that is. Why are they here? Hold on, please. Uh, 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 uh. Let please only the case I call. Don't just we are going to pray for people. What's wrong? What's wrong? This lady is mad. Yes. Since he, when? Yes. 
Who knows you, madam? Are, are you in Zaria here? Yes, sir. Okay. Her case is mental. They like epilepsy. It is like epilepsy, so it affected her brain. You can imagine. Hold my hands. Father, I command that spirit to leave. Mad spirit, go now. You will let this girl go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Out of her now. Out! Thank you, Jesus. Just lie her down. She's going to get up. Sir. I'm, I'm looking at this man and I'm seeing witchcraft because I'm looking at a man who is already dead not even that he's dying somebody that they've already killed he's already dead get a chair and keep him let him sit down and you pray what you guys will do is just try to talk to him I need him to hear what I'm saying because I want him to lift his leg can he see me madam you are his wife you will you will help us eh? and be talking to him give him a seat please so that we don't waste time daddy you're welcome sir from where sir What's the issue? Who brought him out? I came with my neighbors. What's the issue, sir? Okay, is the mic working? Is the mic working, Lawrence? His mic. Sir, can you hear me? I can hear Please you. come. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a problem. Um, have you gone to the hospital, sir? You've gone to the hospital. Yeah, to who has glaucoma? It's me. You. You are yeah. the one who has glaucoma. Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing a writing on your head and it's written glaucoma. Yes, sir. That you have glaucoma. Yes, sir. This problem started like eye problem. Yes, then it moved to your hands. Yes, sir. And now it's on your leg. Yes, sir. And it's like stroke. Yes, you will be healed right now. Amen. The Lord Amen. himself is going to perfect Amen. you. Amen. Daddy. Hold this mic. Shout say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare now, now stroke, stroke leave my life leave my life blindness, blindness leave my life leave my life now, now in Jesus name in Jesus please come name. up and jump come come up come up come up go ahead do what you can do do what you can do do what you can do come walk Also has an eye condition. Please look, sir. Can you see people? I can see people. Could you see them before? Yeah, but I can't recognize them. You can't recognize them. But now, can you recognize them? I can see them, but not fully recognition. Sir? No full recognition. No full recognition. The Lord has started something in his life. He could not. I mean, glaucoma, and then down to stroke. You can see him still limping. Daddy, in the name of Jesus, you came with somebody. Where's the person? Who came with him? You are wearing a white scarf on your head. Who is that? Is there someone like that? Come. You are the one. Is this your father? No, sir. My neighbor. Your what? My neighbor. Oh, that is she's your neighbor. We are going to pray. And then God will bless you a thousand times. I'm going to pray for you. Daddy. Say in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The power of the enemy. The power of the enemy. Over my life. Over my life. Will not die. Will not die. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. Please exercise yourself and go in your liberty. The Lord perfects your body in the name of Jesus Christ. And for you, I'm going to pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help her, please, in the name of Jesus. How can a, a lady like this, planning her life like any other person, now this girl is mad. You look at this. This is real madness. It's not like you said child's play. Eh? She came back from the office on Monday, then she started the attack. She came back from the office mad. Yeah. You see, let me tell you, look at this. It's one thing to leave your house quietly. The Bible says there are arrows. She came back from the office when? On Monday. And then I heard just, can you imagine? 
you got up and went to work and came back mad. This is the world we live in. Are we together now? Let me tell you, wickedness is very, 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 very real. Very real. Very real. Mama, that woman in, on yellow, please come. I don't know you, but the Lord is saying that your joy needs to be restored. One. Two. Why am I seeing you? There's a line between you and that lady with red. This one holding your hands. What is the relationship between two of you? Come. She's my friend. She's your friend. You came together. Yes. I'm seeing a light left you and to her. And then the Lord is saying, I should pray for you because it's the same thing two of you are going through. We have to pray for you. Number one, your joy. Your joy needs to be restored. And then number two, your health. You are feeling pain in your stomach. I have to pray for you so that they will tell you five Carriage, words. Miss Carriage. Mm -mm, Madam, let me talk to you now. Did you tell me miscarriage? You know? Because I'm seeing something growing. Huh? And it's paining you. And this thing will make you to be bleeding unusually. It's fibroid. You are bleeding unusually. And this thing is not just miscarriage. Because for the miscarriage, a man appears to you in the night. And once you see that man, the next thing is you have miscarriage. But we are going to pray. Madam, can I pray for you? Where are you from? Ben. Benway. Ben, boy, I stay in Zara. You stay in Daraka. Let me pray for you. Madam, the Lord needs to restore your joy because there are things I cannot say here, but one of your major requests is the fruit of the womb. Is that true? The fruit of the womb. And I see you even praying that if possible, let God give you twins. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. And you are asking that the Lord will give you twins. Yes, sir. And I'm going to pray for you yes, because those twins will pray that God will give Amen. you twins. You believe it? I'm not a herbalist. Lay your hands on your stomach. We have to pray. There's a man that appears to you. This is demonic. In the name of Jesus and by the blood of the eternal covenant, I set you free from all this nonsense around your life. In the name of Jesus. Ma, I pray for you. You desire children. God will not just give you children. May he give you twins. In the name of Jesus. And that formation of fibroid in your body will cause it right now. You are feeling like fire is moving around your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ. A supernatural miracle for you. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Ah. You are not married. Are you married? Um, because I, I wanted to pray the same thing and the Holy Ghost is telling me you are not married but you are about to marry there's somebody in your life he has engaged you eh? is that true? yes sir who is the person? He has engaged. is that true? Mm -hmm. you are engaged to marry yes, so I, I have to pray for you Hi. my sister don't be offended though there's serious witchcraft in your family mm -hmm. I'm seeing this witchcraft coming from where is Otuko? In eh? Benue State. What do you have to do with Otuko? There is one of my uncle there. But me, I'm from Otuka. Mm -mm. Just answer what I'm telling you. What do you have to do with Otuko? Who is there? He's my uncle. Father, in the name of Jesus, your marriage will be successful. Look at me. I don't know how you do this, but don't allow them to do anything on you that is demonic in the name of marriage. I'm seeing something that has to do with you and a tree. Just, I don't know what I'm saying, but be careful. In the name of excitement of traditional marriage, they initiate people into nonsense and rubbish. I pray that the Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Please lift your hands. I want to pray. Um, God wants to do a very spectacular miracle in this place right now. There is someone here you completely cannot see with your right eye completely cannot see with your right eye but a miracle is going to happen right now completely cannot see with your right eye wherever that person is in the name of jesus i command that you begin to see with that eye now i command that you begin to see with that eye now i command that you begin to see with that eye now please check yourself very quickly 
check yourself very quickly while we are doing that there are there are a number of people and when i pray for you if you get healed and you, and you, you find out that you're in that category just come out quickly let's save time i want to pray for people right now i'm seeing people who have been having severe pain around the chest region like your heart yes some of you when you wake up in the morning severe pain severe pain the lord is healing those people right now right now please check yourself and if you see a miracle run out here there is a miracle happening to somebody right now check yourself severe pain are along the heart region miracles are happening right now right now as i speak only those who are healed of this miracle make your way to the front i see a miracle happening to somebody right now make your way to the front celebrate them they are coming celebrate them they are coming jesus is touching people your chest i see a miracle around the heart region very quickly please save our time jesus is killing people right now Pinonia, is this how you celebrate miracles celebrate miracles celebrate miracles celebrate miracles celebrate miracles celebrate miracles the chest area Power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Check it right now. Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Like, look at the boy, he's even crying. How long? Quickly, just testify one minute quickly. Turn face the crowd quickly. Like, it's okay, you don't have to cry. Up to more than four years. The pain comes when I'm breathing. When you are breathing, you feel the pain. And right now, check it, do what you couldn't do. Completely, no pain. In the name of Jesus. That miracle never returns to you again. Mama, any pain? Let's take a few testimonies. No pain. Completely. But How long has it been? It has been there for years. For more than five, three years. More than five years. Yes. Please check it now. We want you to confirm. Look at this. Look at this completely. The pain is gone. The anointing is even on her. Help her, please. Help her. How long, my dear? Please, those who have been healed, just come here quickly. We'll give you some. Just turn face the crowd very quickly. Organize yourselves, please. Ushers, help them. How long has it been? What's your name and how long? About two years ago. How is the pain like? What is describing for us very quickly? As Don't worry. She's, she's after, just here. Be patient. After I eat, after I eat food, uh -huh. then I'll be strong. Then you'll chest. be struggling your chest. Is, it, is there pain now? Is there pain? Check it. Make sure you are telling the truth. If you lie, we'll clap for you, but you are the one who will suffer. Praise God. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. All of you. All of you healed of that pain, lift your hands. Let me pray for all of you right now. In the name of Jesus, supernatural miracle, it never returns. 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 Give Jesus praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give Jesus praise in the mighty name of Jesus. My goodness, I just saw a spectacular miracle in the realm of the spirit. There is someone here who has just been healed of pile. Please check it. I want you to come and testify. You'll be very surprised. Pile has just been healed right now. Right now, supernaturally. Pile has been healed. Please, if you can check yourself, I would like you to check yourself. Let someone check you so that it is not a lie. Pile with intense pain. And God is healing that person right now. Check yourself. And when you check yourself, please let me have the person come forward. And then we'll come and testify. And God will give you a dramatic 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 miracle pile make sure you check and let the person come out in the name of jesus there is a lady at overflow too not the first one the other overflow um your name is blessing your name is blessing please if there is such a lady like that can you quickly run before we start ministering to cast out every devil and pray for the sick God is touching people. Please, the person with pile, go and check yourself. A lady with the name Blessing. You are wearing white, white jack like sweater. Is there somebody like that? Blessing. Outside, overflow too. Where is she coming from? Please, 
always confirm where are you coming from the other overflow what's your name blessing where's where are you from hold my hands god is going to give you a miracle and he's also delivering your family your family needs deliverance huh your family needs deliverance hold my hands for god to have located you is because he loves you be set free right now in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm hearing the name of someone and you are my namesake your name is joshua you are outside please come in you are outside come in god is bringing deliverance to this lady and her family in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ a supernatural miracle god is bringing deliverance for her family they will never be the same there are four of you that are supposed to be here with this name four of you please stand here all of you <laughs> hallelujah i'm going to pray for you come god is going to use you huh god is going to use you mightily i'm going to pray for you my friend you, you love God, but God needs to help you. Huh? Do you hear how, sir? Kajiko, you have bad friends. We are going to pray for you. Huh? In the name of Jesus, sir, look at me. God is going to help you. Who is a trader in your family? Mother. Eh? My mother. What does she trade? My mother. God wants to change her story. Amen. Hold my hands. You are going to start having strange revelations and an anointing is going to come upon your life. Right? As I'm speaking to you now, an angel of the Lord, you will feel something like a crown being put on your head. It's a mantle. It doesn't mean you should just go and start ministry. But it's to tell you that God will use you very mightily. Father, confirm your word in his life. It will never be the same in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell your mother that a prophecy has come for the family that God is about to lift the family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? and you look like an ordinary person but you are going to hold a lot of money in your hand there is an unction there is grace for finances upon you there is grace for finances upon you where's Ejimi please he's going to go let him lay his hands on you there's grace for finances that will come upon you and it will never be the same I have to pray for you you love God but you are in here you are out here you have bad friends Come, follow me. Your friends are not good people. Where are you? Where are you? You are in Samaru here. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. You love God. Yes, sir. Is it too much of a price to leave your bad friends? It's too much. Ah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray because. God wants to use you as a savior to your family. Are we together? But you see, hold on, please. Let me talk to you. If you really want to be great in life, it doesn't matter whether you grew up with the same people. You must have the courage to tell some people, I love you. I'm not, I don't have a problem with you. But since you are not just going my direction, let me tell you, you can't play games with God. And, and, and you, God is not a herbalist that you pray a bracatabra with. If you are serious with God, then go for him. Are we together? I love you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that every spirit of rebellion will live your life. In the name of Jesus. There is, hmm, this is, this is, I don't know why God is giving me this kind of instructions here. Please don't feel embarrassed. There are two boys and one lady two gentlemen and one lady here you need to be prayed for you have an uncontrollable appetite for stealing please don't be embarrassed ordinarily i would not ask you to go out there are two of them it's not like you're a bad person anything you see you must carry one lady and two guys please come out we're just going to give one minute there are so many things we need to do this is a revelation god is giving me please this is a family of faith we are not saying you are a thief but this has brought so much trouble to you please whether you are inside or outside don't be embarrassed there is a lady in this list and there are two gentlemen 
wherever you are please as you hear the word of the lord make your way to the front you need to be delivered you have tried to stop using willpower it's an addiction you don't use willpower to end supernatural things make your way to the front and i'll be glad to pray with you make your way there's somebody like that i'm i want to pray for this guy but god is saying i should wait for that case there's somebody like that let's celebrate him you are the one there's one more gentleman and a lady one more gentleman and a lady please there's nothing to be ashamed of this is a family of faith please very quickly just one minute there's there's so many other things we have to do satire stealing no matter what happens you can't stop it where's the other brother please don't delay us it doesn't take time to know you have this problem because it's a challenge that you've been trying to solve let me tell you something you see ba these things are spirits it's not whether you are a thief or not if it comes upon you it will make you act that way you may not even use what you are carrying but you will still carry it anyway please where is the last person don't delay us let's pray come let me pray for you before i pray for them the last person quickly summon the courage to come and join them very quickly so that i can minister to you the lord will anoint you the lord is saying i should tell you he's restoring your family huh where are you from i don't know why god is visiting benway state today where are you from from benway state god is visiting benway people in very strange ways it's like the miracle service is for benway people benway people there's a lady self from Benway who is going to be under the anointing now as a testament of this thing I'm saying hi this God I don't know I don't know this this my God make sure she's from Benway where is she from no 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 don't don't worry don't feel embarrassed my dear I love you and I'm very proud of you. Right? Look at me. Kinjiko, come. You love God, but there's one boy around you. Send him a text this night that Joshua Selman said he should never come around you again. Hmm? Don't feel bad. This, this, I'm not, I don't hate people, but number one, this boy is a, is a small boy. He doesn't even know what he's doing. Two, um, please, there are things I cannot say here. Huh? Are you ready for a child now? Huh? Yes. She's saying yes. Uh, no. Okay, well, who knows? I mean, Mary was 14 years when she had Jesus. So, please, but on a, on a serious note, huh? You love God, you are a serious lady, but there's something on you that makes bad boys. Bad boys, the moment they see you, you look at them, you look at their eye, you know that they are not serious Christians and they keep coming to you. But there's one that's been disturbing you. Send him a text and say, Joshua Selman said, please, please, he, he should come for, bring him for Koinonia next week. Let God help him. Yes, instead of driving him, let God help him. Are we together? So I'm going to pray for you. Listen, there are many more people who are bigger thieves that have refused to come out. Are we together? So don't ever be embarrassed. You see, when you ever point one finger at people, make sure that others, be sure that others are pointing at you. I want to pray for you so that you'll be free. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Where is our Benway lady? Careful, please bring her. I want to use her to speak a prophetic word. There was a time it was Kogi, right? Remember. So today God has decided, hold my hands. No, 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 the other hand. I want to pray. Watch what happens now. It's called signs and wonders. These ones are not miracles. They are signs and wonders. They are faith boosters. The Lord is with this lady visiting Benway people right now. Visiting Benway people right now right now god is visiting benway people those altars now now in the name of jesus the son of the living god every territory 
of Benway that has tied the lives of people down. I hold this lady as a point of contact. Inside and outside, the anointing of God will fish them out by power. Shake it, take it, bakata. I command those altars those altars you come under siege tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor listen you will watch all these people come to testify they may not even know what is happening to them you are not just falling for nothing and you don't even have to fall for it to show that something is happening in your life but there are visitations that god is giving people grace in your life and your family in the name of jesus i pray for you I command that spirit to leave you forever no appetite for stealing not only is God delivering you from stealing lust leaves you now in the name of Jesus every lust leaves you now in the name of Jesus my brother I command a miracle for you right now give me your hands in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there's somebody here you stole fuel you stole fuel and this thing brought a problem but you kept quiet it's a spirit God wants to set you free please don't feel embarrassed fuel like um, fuel PMS I don't know if it's you know fuel for something I don't know what it's for but you you found yourself stealing that fuel to do something with it I don't know what it's for please I want to pray for you because the person you took that thing from pronounced a curse are we together please that's why I want to pray for you we have to pray right now and then I'll, I'll minister to the sick please if there is such a person I want you to come out or maybe someone you know there's nothing to be embarrassed about you're seeing us praying for people you stole fuel it may not be that you are a bad person you see fundamentally people are not bad situations pressures and spirits make people act in certain ways that may look disdainful and embarrassing you must be spiritual to be able to love people in spite of their flaws are we together there's somebody like that oh there's somebody like that the holy ghost is still speaking to me there's somebody like that please have the courage to come forward as we begin to pray don't meet me after the service please there is grace and unction to pray for you right now this has to do with fuel that you carried i don't know whether you sold it or you gave it to someone or something like that but then we have to pray for you 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 everyone lift your voice no god is saying i should stop till the person comes out who is the person please my brother look at me I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, embarrassing you, right? It's the flesh that causes this embarrassment. But you see, when God shines light on you, it's not unto condemnation. Are we together? He said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. So we're not people who come and embarrass people and condemn them. The person you took the foil put a curse upon you. And the curse is that nothing you enter will stay in your hand. And that's what I want to take away from your life. That's why I brought you out. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus Christ. It took a man to pronounce this curse. Be free now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I command that it leaves you forever. 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 I take away that pronouncement from your life. In the name of Jesus. You love the Lord with all your heart. And you walk in his ways. God bless you. Please stand up and go hallelujah i'm about to minister to the sick right now very quickly and while i you can you can just bring the lady to front i'm still praying for her hallelujah sister talk to her sister my dear look at me look at me how are you 
how are you are you fine what's wrong with you you don't know that's how she has been Oh, that's how she behaves. She hears you. She actually hears you when you speak, but she won't be able to respond. Do you know why? She's not wicked. She's under bondage. And we're going to pray for her. Right? There's a reason why I ask you to keep her here. I keep laying my hands on her. From work, she came back. I'm praying. I don't know who did this thing, but in the name of Jesus, as he's leaving you, it will land on that person's head. Some of you don't like the prayer I'm praying. I say it again. Whoever brought this, it must land on the head of the person. It's because they didn't do it to your sister or to your brother. That's why. You leave your office and return mad. What if she's the breadwinner of her family? That whole family has come under siege. Let me pray before we, let me prophesy to you before we pray. In the name of Jesus any human agent who has partnered with the realm of the spirit to bring the pain in your life i pray this night is a night of judgment for them this night is a night of judgment for them i say it again this night is a night of judgment for them. this night is a night of judgment i command judgment for them i command judgment for them shake it judgment for them judgment for them any human agent i say it responsible for your pain i command judgment for them while we ask the sick people to come out please if you came here trusting god for healing now is your moment while they are doing that please let's have all the prayer requests just something has happened to her just carry her and put her aside somewhere make your way to the front quickly please organize yourself now is the time for healing very quickly while they are doing that please all of you write your request listen hold on please i allow you to switch off your switch on your phones if you need to and call your loved ones to forward their request for you please you can type it quickly and send it here it's not enough that you've written your request please if you even know the requests of some others you can write it and put their names because we are going to pray for those requests hallelujah you move mountains you cause walls to fall help me you perform miracles there is nothing Standing only because you one more time. Do you move mountains? You cause walks to fall with your power. You perform me. There is nothing. That's impossible. worship team you're going to help us look how many people have come to be healed i thank god because god has found a place where he can communicate his healing power to his people now we're going to be very very fast this is not for the rest of us to be distracted everyone you should be writing your prayer request and you should be praying because after this session there's going to be a massive impartation there is there is need for grace and unction for us and so we're going to pray Jimmy, please come help me we're going to be praying for the sick please listen it doesn't matter who prays for you whether myself or Jimmy. there's a corporate anointing okay so we're praying for you um the moment they pray for you don't leave one line and come and join another one just a touch you don't even have to say what is wrong with you if we ask you that's all right if we don't please 
if there's a prophetic word you will be given if you are not given any word some of you when i touch you you now get angry because i didn't prophesy look let me tell you something this thing you don't do it just the way you want to do at least not for me are we together so it has if there is no word for you just believe and then when hands are laid on you don't just go back to your seat smiling check yourself do what you couldn't do before if you have to go to the hospital then you should go to the hospital for test are we together and if there are still people sitting down and not coming out because of the crowd please make sure you join them there is a reason why we lay hands like this i don't do this in other meetings but then so that we can make contact worship team help us do the best you can god bless you father let there be miracles in the name of jesus christ hold on hold on please how many months pregnant are you eight months we have to pray i'm seeing them cutting you cs but we have to pray for you they gave me the list they gave you the list do you believe god can turn things around yes. cry there is a god that we serve immediately i looked at you i saw them cutting you with a knife huh don't cry i don't know what the doctor said but in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus there will be a miracle for you the baby will adjust to his normal position and he will come out the way he should come out like the hebrew women in the name of jesus christ a supernatural miracle is happening to you right now in the name of jesus god bless you go ahead god bless you when i pray for you go back to your seat in the name of jesus christ be healed right now heal now standing Not knowing how we'll get through this test. Miracle for you. In the name. But holding on to faith, you know best. In the name of Jesus. Healing for you. Nothing Miracle can you. catch you by surprise. You got this figured out. And you're watching us now. And when it looks as if we can win, you wrap the sea in your arms and step in. And everything we need, you supply. You've got this in control. Now we know that you made a way. When a box were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You, you made a way And we're standing here Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough You, you came for it, breakthrough way. You are entering the realm of breakthrough Supernatural breakthrough Not just healing but breakthrough by the power of the Holy Ghost, I open the doors right now in the name of Jesus. And we're standing out. 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 only because you made And we're standing here. Carry the baby, please. Only because you made And we're standing here. Only because you if someone, made If someone is backing a baby, as they are laying hands on the person, ushers, please help so that you move the mountains. Uh -huh. Lord, you move the mountains. Lord, you move the mountains. Lord, you move the mountains. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. The meeting is still on. In the name of Jesus. I declare that every power that wants to stop my testimony, the Lord rebuke you. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. You are doing yourself good when you are praying. You are doing yourself good when you are praying. You must testify. They're singing that every power, every I thing must come down. So you pray. Let her go now. Out! 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 Go! Are you praying? I turn to testify in this season and every power that will stop me from testifying I come against it in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus come on shout it inside and outside in the name of Jesus every legal access that the devil has over my life and over my family by the blood of Jesus that access is broken lift your voice and pray 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 every access please make sure you are praying this is part of the meeting Every legal access the devil has over my life by the blood of the eternal covenant, by that which Christ has done on the cross, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. My door to the next level. Hear the word of the Lord. Be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Command that door to open. The access point to the next level of my life and destiny. I command you to be open. I command you to be open. Revelation 3 verse 8. I have set before you an open door. No man can shut it. Are you praying? No. Mam prakata barato ko sopre ke de ke de bosh. 
On your feet as well. Stretch your hands on this prayer request. Lord, it must be turned to a testimony. Lift your voice and pray. I'm praying on your request. There is a covenant of answered prayer in this house. We invoke that covenant. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing which is gone from, from my lips. Shake it, take it, take the boat. Break it, take it, to so break it, and break it, shake it, take it, man, break it, to break it, break it, take it, take it, and break so to break it. Lord, have respect for the covenant in this house. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. Supernatural miracles. Breakthroughs. 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 Shepo koto pekete. Ekete koto shoto koto. Mata tapa kata rekete. Rekoto so pekete kete kete. Miracle so God. Miracle so God. Hallelujah. Join me, shout a loud amen in the name of Jesus. Is that the best in the name of Jesus? The Bible says, Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. I tell you, fire is burning in this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every request that has been dropped before the God of heaven, we turn it into a testimony now. We turn it into a testimony now. Be turned into a testimony now. Be turned into a testimony now. Between now and the next miracle service, strange answers, strange answers, strange answers, strange answers. The way I'm walking upon this prophetically, in the name of Jesus, that's how you will walk upon every challenge. I step upon it prophetically. Everything that has mocked God, as I step upon it, as help them please, as I step upon it by prophecy, I decree in the name of Jesus that that's how you rise above the challenges. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. There will be a drastic impartation here right now. Just five minutes and we are done. Drastic impartation. Listen. The anointing that is coming upon you is an anointing upon your gift. It's time for what you carry to speak. Lift your hands, everyone. In the name that is above all names. At the count of three. My God, a massive impartation. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. Receive that impartation. 
upon your gift that impartation all over this building is yours for the taking it's yours for the taking produce results produce results produce results hallelujah listen the unction for supernatural results in the name of jesus that your results are not ordinary i stand by this apostolic and prophetic office and i command at the count of three let it fall like rain supernatural results one two get ready three take it take it take it take it supernatural ministry supernatural business supernatural family oh, oh, oh. help me Of results you have not seen in your life your business and your ministry I prophesy to you go and produce that result from today go and produce that result from today from today I prophesy it I program it upon your spirit go and catch fire Whatever has refused to work in your life, you have tried and tried and it has refused to work. By this unction tonight, we force it to work in the name of Jesus. Hear me? All those trusting God for jobs, you have done everything you know to do, the door is not opening. In the name that is above all names, go and get your miracle job. Go and get your miracle job. Go and get your miracle job. Every family going through stress and tension. You don't even know what to do. I pray right now. The force responsible for the pain in your family. Tonight, judgment upon them judgment upon them judgment upon them judgment upon them hear me every idea every concept you need to rise to the next level of your life i pray for you in your dream in your sleep through visions may those ideas be revealed to you Help them, please. I want to pray for students now. The kind of exams you have never written in your life, the kind of CGPA, the kind of breakthrough, take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Take it now. Take it now. Hear me. Every spirit that makes you blank when you are writing exams, it comes under fire now. It comes under fire now. Whoever is holding your breakthrough, the key to the next level of your life, in the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, they must look for you. I prophesy it. They must look for you. Hear me? You will not look for them. They will find their way and look for you. I pray for you. Everyone here, who has developed his gift 
what you need is for God to send those who have what it takes to honor it. I pray for you. Listen. Hear me. There is a way you can preach before men who don't need your grace. They will rubbish your ministry and make you look like an idiot. There is a way you do business in the presence of those who don't even have what it takes to value what you carry. But I'm praying for you. There is an unction that directs men only to those who can pay for what they carry. Rabbi, help him, help him, help him, help him, help him, help him. In the name of Jesus, that grace, may that anointing direct you right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Everything that has refused to grow here, whatever God has given you that has refused to grow, in the name that is above all names, I command it to grow now. I command it to grow now. I command it to grow now. Let me speak over your finances. Many of you have given. Many of you have sown seeds. But the harvest is being trapped somewhere. I pray for you. The force that releases the harvest of men. I command that force to be at work for you now. 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 Hallelujah. Whatever covers your glory for men to see and bless you. You are walking physically but it's Ichabod. The glory is covered. As a young lady, you are beautiful but there's nobody to say I want to marry you. I command that fail covering your glory. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Arise. Shine. Arise. Shine. Arise. Shine. Hallelujah. Two more prophetic words and we're done. It says, and thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. In this season, you need direction. Everything is not the way to go. Hear me. Please hear me. There are people right now, your bailout is to know what God wants you to do. That he told you to do it yesterday does not mean he's still saying do it. You need a fresh instruction. I open your spiritual ears. Your sense of perception. Your sense of perception. Your sense of discernment. Be open now. Be open now. Finally, I pray for you. Everything that is upon this ministry is supposed to show in your life. So if there is honor, honor is when God positions men who discern what you represent and openly celebrate it. It's called honor. Honor is not something you lobby for. It's not a political position. He said you shall call the sons of Aaron and you shall take some of your honor and give them. Joshua, sorry. I want to pray for you. Listen. Do you know what honor is? Let me tell you the truth. Honor is better than money. Money can give you things but it may not give you honor. Honor is when men can rise up and fight for you because they want to preserve what you represent. It's called honor. He says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. There are people who do not have honor in their life. Let me tell you how you know there is no honor in your life. There is no helper. Honor 
is when men can stand before you and say before you touch him you must touch us honor when a ministry does not have honor you beg for everything you pay for everything you explain everything honor is when men god puts men at the gates to plead your cause you are there praying and somebody is clearing any bad air about you any bad impression about your ministry there is always a voice to say no the hand of god is upon them it's called honor i pray for you what has made you fight alone when things go wrong you explain alone nobody to help you listen this is not about prosperity this is about the ministry of men i have seen this in my life there is such a thing called the gift of men where god will raise men strangely everywhere you go that there must always be a man to advocate for you it's an unction otherwise whenever things go well or go wrong you pay for it by yourself whether things go bad or things go well you pay for it it's because that honor is not there are we together lift your hands i want to pray for you receive that prayer from the depth of your spirit because it will change your life the grace that god has put by covenant upon this house he said that i he entered a covenant with david that there will never be a man the throne will never lack a man i pray for you at every point of your life those who must arise for you i bring them into your life through the mantle of honor through the mantle of honor may that anointing come upon you now let it come upon you now in your going out in your coming in be honored be honored listen everywhere you enter that grace that distinguishes men let it come upon you hallelujah jesus will bless you jesus will lift up your name jesus will lift up your name Jesus, we lift up your name. Yeah. Jesus, we lift up your name. Give us five minutes, please, everyone. No moving around. There are people here who need to give their lives to Christ. Hear me. The Bible says that this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life and that this life is in His Son. Please pay attention, concentrate, no moving around. It says, he that has the son has eternal life. There are two groups of people right now. I want you to rush out here quickly. Those who have never committed their hearts to Jesus. You have never at any point in your life surrendered totally. I don't care how many times you have come for altar call. You have not made a genuine decision for Jesus. Number two, there are those who have given their lives to Christ. But the pressures and the vicissitudes of life have pushed you to a point where you have derailed in your walk with God. And you are saying, man of God, I need restoration. Wherever you are, please don't waste our time. Our time is gone. The Lord is calling you right now. And I want you to make a genuine commitment. Rise up and walk to the front right now. Rise up and walk to the front right now. Inside and outside. God bless you. People are coming. God bless you. People are coming. Please clear the way for them run like there's fire on the mountain in all the overflows all those following us online you may not be able to come out but prepare your heart to make this prayer with us god bless you god bless you god bless you go ahead and say today is the day i will make a decision for jesus there are still people god is asking to come out don't be ashamed make your way to the front no matter what you have done there is a new beginning for you you deserving of more. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you so much. 
for answering this call i'd like you to lift your right hand to heaven if you are still joining them please make your way it's not too late we are not reciting a poem this is a serious prayer that will determine your eternal destiny say after me very clearly say lord jesus those online followers say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe you died for me and you shed your blood for my sin this night i accept you as my savior and i receive eternal life into my spirit the power of sin and satan is broken over my life forever from today i'm a child of god i'm saved i'm born again in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones nobody can come except you draw them i pray that this that they have done as simple as it looks oh god i pray that this will be the reason for them to not only spend their eternal destiny with you but to live victorious lives here on earth in the name of jesus christ every power of the flesh of sin of satan is broken over your life from today you move forward ever and backward never in jesus name amen, and amen. Thank you so much. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye